It's the Bob and Tom Show. Are you doing your last news story, Christy? Oh, I can do one. Oh, go for you it. You said if you had one more. If art museums are a little too stuffy. Fart and museum. Art. Oh. I'd go to a fart museum. Hell yes. <laughs> Farts through the ages. <laughs> That's a little hard to document. The dawn of fart. <laughs> How old Hold am on. I? Hold on a am second. Am I going to be still making fun of farts at 50? Good I don't morning, know. Bob okay. and Tom show. Hey, Bob and Tom show? Yes. <laughs> Call for the fart museum. <laughs> oh, yeah? Chick, yeah. I just want to crack you. You, you don't want to come here. <laughs> you so don't I, I, gather, I gather it's a uh, fully all-dimensional uh, uh, smell-o-vision. It's, it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lousy museum. <laughs> really? Oh, this museum is no good at all. Whoa. Oh. Whoa, what was that? Oh, it's part of the multimedia display they've got going on. Uh-huh. When you walk in. Right. Oh, it's unbelievable. There's just like this big air compressor there. And it blows farts at people. <laughs> wow. Do they Somebody... smell? Oh, it smells awful. Uh. Uh, the only way we really make money is uh, through our concession area. <laughs> really? Yeah, we, what do you sell there? Well, we rent raincoats for the back part of the tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Whoa. Whoa. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, uh, what, does it have, what's the atmosphere like there? Is it real the thick? atmosphere? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds <laughs> thick. Oh, Man. Humid and cloudy. <laughs> now, do you have, uh, is your is your fart museum primarily contemporary, or is it modern, or do you have classical pieces? Uh, mostly fart deco. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, okay. It's the style, and uh, while I got... Excuse me! Oh, boy, Do hey. you work here? Yeah, I work here. My family and I would like to get our money back. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? Uh, that was uh, our tribute to uh, all the little people that played the munchkins. <laughs> Let me uh, take you into this one room. Okay. Uh, I want to want to show you what's going on here. All right. What's in there? Oh God. <laughs> what is it? Which room are you in? Oh, it's the SBD room. Oh boy. Silent but deadly. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Okay. I gotta go because, uh, man, this is unbelievable. <laughs> we gotta, this is like the third time this month already. Uh huh. We gotta re wallpaper. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta go. Say, where are you guys located? We're, uh, we're in Brownsville, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Quick trip there to the Fart Museum. We're all big fans, of course. <laughs> if there were a Fart Museum, if there was a Fart Museum, I think it'd be predominantly guys visiting the Fart Museum. I think you're right. I don't think <laughs> yeah. Girls would think that was very good. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the uh, performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. And uh, congratulations going out to Chick McGee, the uh, the shoe of the week. I'm the smartest and, man in the world. Uh, a big night last night. You had, uh, as I recall. I had Philly, and I, I had, I'm sorry, Tampa Bay, and I had, had Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo, minus the 10. Wow. And I think I said something like, oh, it's probably a 35-17, something like that. It was 30. 31-17, I think. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, congratulations. Now, where, where does this put you for the weekend? Uh, three and three. A robust okay. three and three. Okay, okay. But you're okay. But for the season, 91 and 79. All right. There you go. So, uh, what do you think? Congratulations. How's that, How's that taste, huh? And um, is that your mic going off or my uh, head, head? What? My mic went off. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, now, uh, coming up this week, we will have um, more football and we'll have more picks. Yes. We have a couple of winners that uh, came during our holiday break. You ever say wiener instead of winner? <laughs> That's fun, isn't it? Rarely. Um, we'll, we'll be speaking with Jeremy yeah, Childers and Spencer I see you're, you're, Suharski. I see you're still going to D, D up. You're still throwing me the defense, aren't you? You're still up there in the, in the, in the, in the two-point with your hands outstretched like the kids in the high school basketball program. You're ready to go for me today. I can feel it. Okay. okay, I saw the Harlem Globetrotters over the weekend. Speaking of defense, uh -huh. wow, there well, is none. Not a lot of D defense. there. Oh. And it seems to me, uh, to, I, correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I often am, but it seems to me like the other team 
they might be in on this, I think. You think? Do you think that's it? And, and not to mention the refs, I think, are playing along. Uh, so the really? simplest gags make me howl. <laughs> <laughs> There's, at one point, one of the guys passes the ball to the referee, and he looks really stunned and passes it back, then he drives it. I, hilarious. Are there new bits? Hilarious. <laughs> do they do the, the confetti? No, I don't want to give anything they, away. They, they, yeah. but they, oh, Take they, the ladies' purse and throw the confetti. And, oh, that's just, you know, yeah. I, mean, I go every year. I can't get enough of it. Oh, boy. They got some good shooters, too. Yeah, and they they put in yeah. a they put in a four point line. They oh, did. how about that? I think the three point line is is uh -huh. hard, but they're, they're... think of those guys that and those Harlem Globetrotters. They they they're not in the NBA. They have to play for the Globetrotters, right? The implication is they're not good enough to be in the NBA, or they're better. Oh, they're too good for the NBA. Yeah, is that's what you're right. Saying. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure they pay better than the NBA. <laughs> didn't, <laughs> didn't Will Chamberlain play for the Globetrotters? Yes, he did for a year, for a couple of years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in any event, uh, he uh, scored a hundred in a game. You know, <laughs> <laughs> of course he was eight feet tall, and then uh, yeah, that was and then the you day. had Bob Cousy. That was the, the when he scored a hundred. That was the day they wouldn't let the guy in with a little fence, and the his buddy with the D. Yeah. I saw that yesterday in Buffalo. Did you watch the Bills game? There was a guy with a D and a fence. Classic. Oh, he had the the D uh, the white uh, picket fence D, and then the the fence. Do the they picket fence. have to have special permission to get? Because you I'm can't sure take anything do. of any size into a game right. these days. Yeah. But yeah, you can't. To make special permission, hey, if you have a D and a fence, report to gate seventeen for to make sure it's not made of C four. Well, if I go to a game, uh, <laughs> last professional sports game, I went to a Braves game with my daughter. I took my D. Did they you did. take your you take your D when you go to the Cardinals games? Yeah, I usually have it with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. take your D. Oh, that D. Yeah, coming up, we have D's in the news. Really? Yes. Chris, do you take your D with you? Uh, depends on if he's busy that day. Uh, right. <laughs> I thought it was in your purse. We have an unusual story in the uh, world Not of uh, adult uh, human... Uh, Interaction? Uh, yeah, that's really bothering me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I can tell. I it would. People kissing? No. Oh, it's worse. You know what? I don't... <laughs> oh, my God. People I don't see you kissing anyone. I know, right? <laughs> I can't, like, I can't like picture French that either. Open like, mouth? I yeah. love you kind of way. Yeah. Not even a, a deep kissing soul goodnight. Kiss. I don't see you kissing the kids goodnight on the cheek. <laughs> well, lately I haven't been kissing them goodnight unless they come down because I'm not going upstairs. I see you I behind. behind. I got a bum knee. I'm not going up those steps. I for see anything. you behind the desk with your candle <laughs> lit, <laughs> and they come in. Father, we're ready for bed. <laughs> and your crooked finger. <laughs> I don't no, see you in the morning. I don't have any dreams about ghosts, no. little girls. <laughs> was, which one of you now? All right. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning, God Dad, willing. I was wondering, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Have you gotten any movement on my leasing my car? Just never you mind about <laughs> leasing a car. <laughs> uh, none of that's true. Well, um, yeah, coming up, we have a new um, so-called trend in that world, which is really disturbing. Huh. Uh, also coming up today, Kostaki Economopoulos, comedian and our NFL correspondent. We'll see what he has to say about the uh, current situation in the NFL. And um, lots more games coming up. Speaking it's, of trends, what's a, a, there, there's a there's a problem, and then there's a, a fluke, and then there's a trend. What is it? Like you lose one game, well, it happened to anybody. Mm. You lose two games, yeah. You lose you lose six out of seven. That's a trend, right? Sure. Isn't that a trend? Uh, I, I think. Well, yeah. that's kind of a. There's no hard and fast rules on what constitutes a trend. That's true. Uh, now, um, we have... Uh, That's where the Eagles find themselves. They lost six out of seven, Tom. Oof. They were 10 and one, right? They were 10 and one at Yikes. one point wow. in the season. Wow. They had the world They had the world at their feet. They did? Yeah. Well, um, now, um, also coming up, we have uh, some Valentine's Day uh, uh, things that are out there that are somewhat uh, surprising and disturbing. Oh, no. Uh, I, you'll find, I think. I, I see you referring to them as Valentine things. A guy who doesn't kiss people. <laughs> Valentine things. <laughs> well, when you find out what it is, you'll see why I referred to it as a Valentine's thing. I don't think a lot of people are going to line up for this gift. Have you ever mm. given a live animal for Valentine's Day? I don't. You never give anyone a live animal. <laughs> <laughs> people want a live animal, they require it themselves. You know, to, uh, you know those viral videos that are purposely there to make you cry? Yes. Like somebody who lost a puppy recently. And they, this guy got her a new puppy for Valentine's Day. Right. She, you know, hits her knees and starts crying. Oh, jeez. You wouldn't do that? You wouldn't give her a new puppy? Uh, yeah. No. That's a very personal 
thing, and I know. I don't encourage people to give random people dogs if they're not dog people. Well, we're not talking about random people. We're talking about yeah. people you love. Your significant love others. Yeah. The person you'd kiss on the mouth. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here's Very something you have to attend to 24 hours a day. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, you weren't You weren't in the... Um, we're pretty much the same age. You weren't in the... Where they would give you a, 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 a baby chick or a bunny for Easter. We, we never got that. I mean, but we no. weren't That's affluent. A tremendously bad idea. Yeah. Did I got you, I got a baby chick once. You got a chick for Easter? Mm -hmm. How long did yeah. it live? I had no memory. Remember in Bridesmaids, the wedding gift was puppies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got a puppy. Yeah. And Melissa Every, McCarthy, I got four. She took a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, they, uh, that's a very unfortunate thing at Easter. It gives it give a kid a rabbit or a chicken. No, that's a terrible Somebody uh, on staff got a, like four or five baby chicks for you, and there was an incident with a drowning, I think. Oh, my oh, God. My word. <laughs> the chicks. See, I, I, I was just drowning. trying to tease the fact. Turned out they weren't ducks, huh? We have yeah, unusual. Yeah. Baby uh, chicks are well, well, speaking of animals, Aww. we have, um, we have uh, beavers in the news, uh, fruit bats in the news, uh, snakes in the news, a dead hamster in the news. Oh, no. On a positive note. We have a, a great new Miss America. Have you seen the new Miss yes, America? Yes, she's amazing. No, no, I haven't. She's uh, she's a jet pilot. Uh, Is this awesome. still a thing? Do people actually? Oh, I can't wait for the Miss America pageant. <laughs> you know something? No, because I didn't even know it had taken place. Let's all get uh, organized to objectify. Let's yeah, do sure this. She's a, sure yeah, she's a badass, but so. she is a badass and beautiful. Cool. Yeah, she, she's a spectacular looking woman. Uh, now we also have. Um, uh, <laughs> she's a person, though, right? <laughs> Yes, I'm sure she's... Never mind. Uh, we have uh, something for Josh. I'm about trying to help you. Believe me. Grammar and dating. Oh, really? Okay. Which I think you'll you'll appreciate. Yeah, I like that stuff. The, the what grammar. if you're on a first date with someone and they, they trot out the double negatives? Oh. I done never eat here. Oh, oh, yeah. oh man. Like, oh, yeah. Unironically? Yeah, over. yeah. Like, they, they think that's correct. Uh, well, it can, it can be a negative and a positive. But uh, as, as Tom yeah. would say, what, what if they're spectacular looking? What <laughs> yeah. about that? Yeah. I ain't never seen one of them angry. Uh, oh, really? Uh, well, I, I can't see anything no, for your no boob to, right no, now. Angry. No need You're to have dessert. Up. I'm going to be able to uh, tell you a few things <laughs> <laughs> that'll go my way. <laughs> you know, it's good luck if you uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, touch yeah, my... Uh, <laughs> while you're eating uh, bread. Oh, you never heard that? No, it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's really weird. You never heard that. <laughs> we'll find out about that. Uh, it's all it's all coming up. Uh, but uh, right now, I want to talk about uh, some. If you're watching any football, you saw the sleep number bed. Sleep number bed is the yeah, official official more or less bed of NFL sure. players. Yeah, uh, they and, love it. And uh, let's do a little a real quick quiz. I haven't done our quiz for a while. Christy Lee, what is your sleep number bed? Uh, your smart bed. What is that uh, sleep number setting? It's thirty five. Meaning what? I like a softer mattress. Let me see. Yes. Now, chick yeah. One hundred. I like the firmest of all. So you got the Sleep Number Smart Bed, and you can adjust the firmness level. They have perfected this. It's a simple idea. They are executing brilliantly. Uh, so uh, what's it all about? Of course, it's about getting quality sleep. It's not just the time you sleep. It's the way that you sleep, and that's where the Sleep Number Smart Beds come in. They will actually help you dial in the proper number, the proper firmness for that bed of yours. And by the way, you can adjust it at any time. So it's like having 40 mattresses in one. You don't just get stuck with the one you bought at the mattress store. So uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about sleeping. Well, how about talking about J.D. Power? They rank Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. So get the details by going to sleepnumber.com. By the way, uh, right now, 40% savings in the Sleep Number Special Edition Smart Bed. This is a limited time offer. If you'd like to get some information about J.D. Power's independent surveys, well, go to J.D. Power 2023 Award Information at jdpower.com slash awards and see just how the Sleep Number Smart Beds are winning all the awards. Sleep Number stores are where you find the Sleep Number Bed, of course. Go to sleepnumber.com slash BT Show to find one of the stores. And then when you get to the store, you'll get all the details, all kinds of interesting things in the world of financing that sleep number smart bed as well. Check it out. I know I love my sleep number bed. I'm at 85. Thanks for asking, Josh, your sleep number setting. 65. I see. Uh, it's very thoughtful. And I know that it, uh, your smart bed smarted you into getting that number. Now, uh, coming up, we have a news from the world of sports. Uh, movement. Head coaches all also, over got, the globe. We got one of those uh, dead guys that's not dead anymore in the news. Aye. Wow, in the back of an ambulance, and he's dead. Nope, Oops. wait a minute. We'll find out how that happened. He got better. Yeah, you know, uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Good morning, Sunshine.
I mean, okay. do you want to do you want to sit where no one knows? You want a different mic so you can stand. Yeah, up? I want to stand because I mean, this is a real. Well, you can turn that up into a standing mic if well, you, you can uh, take that so out of the uh, socket there. It'll. Oh, if I can hold it. Oh, look at oh. oh, look out. oh. wait a minute! Now just uh, take the whole thing out of the stand. Yeah, you can take it out if you. There we go. Oh, I'm feeling good. Hey, Chickster, how's it going over there? We have a we have a thirty second thirty second snippet of the music. Does this music start? Are you aware of where this starts? Do you have enough intro and this? We're, you know, me and old Dino practiced it once or twice, so yeah. we okay. might be able to figure it. All right, out. We'll, we'll see. I'll, I'm going to have to ride the volume here. Make sure I get it right. Ready? Yeah, I think so. Here we oh, go, boy. No one can hold you down if you really want it. Just steal your destiny right from the hands of fate. Reach for a cup of life because your name is on it. Do you really want it? Do you really want it? Go, go, go! Live in La Vida Loca! Idiots! It's a lay, a lay, a lay! Oh, it, oh, it is? sounds just oh, like sorry. living La Vida Loca. It sounds just it's like not, living La Vida not, Loca. Uh, Perhaps oh, our oh, arguments oh, with Ricky Martin, <laughs> not even with you. I think maybe. Okay, I've so. never been more disappointed. <laughs> so, what are we, we're supposed to go? Ole, ole, ole? Yes, guys, come on, this is a give and take song. No let's let's try it again. Just steal your destiny right from the hands of fate. Reach for the cup of life because your name is on it. Do you really want it? Do you really want it? Yeah. Olay. Olay. To EO. Ole, ole, ole. No, no, no. Ole, ole, ole. Tonight's the night. We're going to celebrate the cup of life. Ole, ole, ole. No, it, 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 now, wait a minute. In our defense, oh, that's... I, it's living La Vida Loca, only yeah, redone. Yeah, much. it is, yeah. for the most part. Uh, that is very judgmental of you. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, it does sound very similar. It sounds very accurate. similar. I do but love the song Liv- Living La Vida Loca. We I will love, say that. Do you I, do that one? I, well, it's a great song. I don't do that one because it's not as much fun with the audience. Any bugs come out, it's not my fault. I know. Okay. I'm just going to cover just the edge of your nostril. Uh-huh. Breathe, through, breathe through your mouth. That's freaking out. A little bit. I thought you said you were a mouth breather. I am. I did not expect to be attacked. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect what just happened right there. I'll be honest. That freaked me out. I don't know how the wax stays on the stick when she no, yanks no, it the out. No, sticks, the sticks just in the... How long does the wax take to dry? Just a couple minutes. It's not oh, long, okay. yeah. So It'll Pat stick. has a stick sticking out of his nose. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. And the wax is coating the, the hairs in his nose. But now you notice he, his, his hands were in fists. His uh, legs are crossed. He's all tensed up. Oh, got to relax. Got to relax. Yes, relax. Gotta relax. It's okay. It's okay. Got to relax. I have a stick sticking out of my face. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Uh, no, the wax is drying, uh, and it's. It, you want to make sure this is really good and and dry. Oh, uh, I would hope. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah. And I want people to know, we're, I'm a firm believer that you need hair in your ears and your nostrils, but we're just getting just the just stuff the that's sort of visible, yeah. So, like that gross guy at the store, the clerk yeah, we're, yeah. the hanging out. Hair, hanging out. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, the guy who's making your sandwich. Yeah, yeah. you don't want the nose mm-hmm. I kind of feel like I'm uh, drowning. <laughs> drowning? <laughs> can't Being breathe out. Being waterboarded kind of thing? <laughs> you can't breathe out your nostril. No, you're fine. Don't breathe out of my nostril? No. <laughs> You don't want to suck it up into your nostril. <laughs> no, then we got a problem. Yeah, then we got a yeah, major got a problem. It is a whole you know, The game. NFL will ban us from all broadcasts. And, yeah. Um, oh! The story that oh! <laughs> we did it. Yeah. We did it. I didn't know we were doing it. I did not know she attacked it. She set me up there. Oh, boy. That's the key. But you have to see on. this. Can you, Can you see those hairs? Holy oh, moly, look at the, look where'd that, that thing come hair. from? That's yeah. wax, that was in your nostril. That was from my mustache. That's no, it wasn't. Yeah, well, how much hair is it? Let me see. Oh, is it bleeding? No, it looks great. <laughs> how much hair is it? If anybody ever checks out the inside of my nose. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh-huh. Wow. Better? Do you guys understand? She was setting it up, like patting it down, you know, like yeah, checking oh, on sure. me, and then all of a sudden, one wham. pat down, wham, stick out. <laughs> That's the key. That way you're not even worried about it. I'm not going to fall for it next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Well.
And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. A little <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. <laughs> Comedian Dwight Slade. I think they're overdoing the ID for liquor. We ID under 65. Bring your walker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got carded the other day, and it's like, look into my eyes. You ever seen a 21-year-old with this much hate and bitterness in their eyes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's not count the birthdays. Let's count the dark angels. Uh -huh. Oh, the people you. who think and cluck at the same time. <laughs> how, how does that work? You ask them a question. You go, hey, are we doing dinner tomorrow? Dinner tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, an aborigine? Answer the question. <laughs> I want to go to dinner. You're hunting for Coke bottles. Let's go. <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This is insanely crazy. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. It's a party. Yes. Welcome. There's Pat Godwin. You're invited. Oh my gosh, Chick McGee. I think we should have a. At the sound of the kazoo, I think we, who who who's with me? Pat Godwin do a song this this, this yes. segment. What do you think? Huh? Yeah, Patty. Woo! Oh, I'm dragging my butt this morning. That's a little warm. Oh, you all right? Yes. Oh, I got a couple side hustles going on. Oh, do you? Oh, yeah. What do you, got? what do you got going? Did a jingle yesterday, a demo for a national uh, ad. Oh, no nice. How's that going? Wow. I think it's going pretty you, good. You can't sing it, though, for us yet. No, I can't even talk about it. Is it no. something, <laughs> something, something? <laughs> Diarrhea. No, Is it that yeah. one? No, but that's good. They yeah. nailed that one. Yeah. yeah. You that's, that's still out there. Have you seen the dance move that they do? It's, <laughs> it's like they rub their tummy and then, yeah. and then they pat their 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 hip for diarrhea. It's, do they really? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's cute. Wonderful. Really cute. Um, but that's that. not that's not the jingle you're working on. No, no. You can't say what it is. Big national you, company, no, you, though. You said you have side hustles. Yeah, I got a couple other things. What's the other to... one? What's the other one? Oh, uh, well, that's... A male that's a, gigolo? That's What's a bit of a on? silly one. You've probably oh. seen this in magazines at the, the back of a magazine. Set your poems to music. Oh, it's how a, nice. You can actually make money putting a melody to people's uh, so lyrics. Hang on a second. So whoa, if, whoa, whoa. Let me understand this then. That's how Elton John and Bernie Taupin did it. Uh, people are sending you... Yeah, I've done two so poems. far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you play them? Yeah, hold on. I gotta, how did, I gotta how does this here. work? Are you allowed to rewrite the lyrics? and? No, I can't touch to... the lyrics. You that's know, Bernie wrote uh, wrote the poems, and Elton uh, put the music. Uh, yeah, the, that's the, the first great. Yeah, that, Elton, what has he got? Is, yeah, this is just okay. random people just sending you yeah. poems. Yeah, the first is a divorced guy who wanted to uh, make his daughter feel better about what was going on. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And it, it's, that's nice. Uh, he just sent me this. It's called Dear Princess. Oh, okay. Dear Princess... Your mom and I are getting divorced It's not your fault Seems our marriage has run its course We'll be here for you Put aside our differences That's what parents are for Signed, Love Daddy P.S. Your mother's a whore. Oh, oh my. So yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you can't yeah. change. You're not allowed to change. No, you're not allowed to no. change. No. change one thing. Takes, a, takes a bad turn there at the end. Well, that's that's what he wrote. Yeah, okay. what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah. Gonna... Is, the, is the other one from, from a guy or a lady? Uh, it, it, this The other one is pretty interesting. It's, uh, and I gave it a little poppier kind of melody. I okay. Think, okay. Who has the prettiest legs around? I do. Who has the loveliest evening gown? I do. But life is tough, life is hard, especially here in the prison yard. <laughs> Who had the tightest little buns in town? <laughs> I did. He's <laughs> well, at the yeah, institution. Yeah, yeah. He sent me yeah, a yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure, I'm going to sing it the best you can with what you're given. <laughs> so, so sing it for How do you pay you in cigarettes? Sing it for his pal. Uh, <laughs> hmm. well, thank you very much, Pat. Uh, now, um, a couple things coming up. Among uh, all of us, who do you think would do the, 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 the best in prison? The fun. fun Function for on a day-to-day -day basis, who would be Josh. okay about it? You mm. think? Yeah. Hmm. Why? Why do you think that, Christy? Because I think you're more together than anyone else in this room. Is I that think. right? Is that right? <laughs> Probably yeah. true. I would do okay just because I have a plan for when I get there. Do you? Yeah. What's yeah, your yeah. plan? Punch, punch the big guy. A lot of, guy, lot of, lot of crying. Similar to that, I'd go. Who's the who's who's the uh, uh -huh. the real mastermind around here? Yeah, yeah. And I'd shiv him day one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right. I mean, I'm already in there. Yeah. Spend some time in the hole. Yeah. yeah. What What's the worst that's going to happen? Most? Uh, you're going to get I, I, back. I get killed, and then I'm out of yeah, I'm out of Me, jail. I, All right, I would cry the Pat most. Pat would cry the most. Because I've been there, I already cried the most. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine to someone telling Tom they can't? He, you, Tom, you can't leave your cell. You no, can't, you got to sit here. 
with with you and your thoughts. That's all you have. <laughs> uh, Do I get a book? No. Oh no, I'm, no. That's I'm a out. privilege, Mister. Okay. Well, uh, right. thanks. Firstly, we're not in prison, so we don't have to worry about that right now. Yeah, um, I did want to point out that okay. um, uh, Patty G is going to be at uh, Pat Coslett's. This is a famous gig in Evansville coming up Saturday, February tenth. And uh, this always sells out, so act now. He's got a great space there. It's got a stage. And it's, it's you and Mr. Oske, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, um, Also, coming up this Friday, it's going to be uh, Jeff Oske uh, from our show, Greg Hahn and Dave Dyer in Green Bay at the Meyer Theater. So that's kind of a great thing happening for some great live comedy now. We uh, turn to the sports page with Chick McGee. Big good doings yesterday in the NFL. Yes, we started in Buffalo where uh, Josh Allen threw for three touchdown passes and ran for another 52 yards. Whoa. Scored a touchdown, and the Buffalo Bills beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 31-17 in the AFC wildcard playoff game. That was postponed today because of blizzard conditions in Orchard Park. Apparently... Uh, the stadium is right there on the uh, the sweet spot for all that lake effect snow. Mm, yeah. You know, the what is it, Lake Erie up there, I think? Uh, That's correct. Which is also uh, part of the Atlantic Ocean, right? I think yeah. we, we, yeah. we proved uh -huh. this. That's exactly sure. right. They all yeah. have to be connected. They all have to be connected. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Erie goes to no way it isn't. Lake Champlain. And impossible then, uh, for it not to be connected. Right out, <laughs> right out <laughs> to Niagara sea. Falls is uh, in there somewhere. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. This is all very... Niagara Falls feeds the Atlantic Ocean. Very, very helpful. That's exactly right. Do you think there's anybody out there, a kid going to school, who uses us for a, a God, geog I hope not. geography reference? <laughs> it was fun to watch the snowball fights during the football game. Every time somebody, yeah. Bill scored a touchdown, it was, it was snowball fun, man. <laughs> it it was. was great. They were sitting on snow in the yeah, seat. They, yeah, yeah, they couldn't uh, get all the snow out uh, of the seats. Uh, that was a problem. I loved it. <laughs> a lot of people stood. They're used to it. They were excited. And they got to see a great game uh, for them, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and once again, Chick McGee picked, um, you had both uh, Buffalo and Tampa Bay. Buffalo so. minus the 10 and uh, Tampa Bay plus the 3. Tampa Bay wins outright. Buffalo wins by uh, more than 10. So mm -hmm. there you go. Well, well done. done. Very good. Very yeah. good. Uh, we'll, have, right uh, we'll have uh, more picks coming up later this week. And Baker Mayfield throws for 337 yards and three touchdowns. Formerly of the Browns, Tom. Formerly of, uh, what is the commercials he did? He lived at the stadium. Remember, and he was. Oh, that's a, right. Was oh, that I a, remember was that. that. An insurance or, company or a I th bank? I think about I'm I'm Progressive Insurance, maybe, or something like that. He was talking to his neighbors. <laughs> you know what Baker Mayfield has in what? leading the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? It's the second team uh, to victory. He had uh, three touchdowns and no picks. Second, uh, fourth quarterback to do that all time for two different teams. Hmm. Baker Mayfield has moxie. He does have moxie. I like he moxie. Has moxie. A lot of moxie. I like, I like that word. I moxie. like his name. It sounds like some kind of a thing you'd hear in a movie about the Air Force. Yeah. Uh, Roger, Baker Mayfield won. <laughs> Man, it does. 10-4, uh, Baker Mayfield. Maybe we'll be, the we'll we'll new Top Gun. Maybe we'll, Baker will be there. Okay. Yeah, Top Gun 3 is coming out. Oh, man. It is? I'm Tom gonna... Cruise says he's making a third, yep. I got a pass, man. It's a money what? machine. The second one was good. You know why? Because they won't uh, name a villain. They won't, uh, they, you know, like it's the Russians or it was, right, the, the last oh, time it was a, very generic. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah, they got to be faceless. Uh, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. They want to do well internationally is what. Uh, I, I guess. I don't, <laughs> they don't need to be banned in uh, some of the places that ban movies because oh, they're yeah. the villains. Yeah. yeah. And you said when you were in Korea, when you went to the movies, they had fish. For your popcorn, so you can get uh, their popcorn. They didn't butter was not a thing for your popcorn. You you could sprinkle on uh, onion, onion. Yeah, oh, onion. That was but, great on a date. But they did have yeah. popcorn. Onion popcorn, powder. Right? They did have popcorn, but uh, squid was big. Uh, uh, squid jerky essentially is what it was, uh, and it was flat and had dried tentacles. That, uh, yeah, no way. And they had different flavors. I remember one time I, somebody in front of me was ordering it. And they said, I'll have a squid or whatever. And it was, you want plain or peanut buttered? Oh. <laughs> what? I'm not making is it, is it in a up. Hey, your squid got my peanut butter. <laughs> is it dry? Yeah, oh, very. Yeah, dry yeah. Like squid. you chew and, I mean, it's like jerky. Yeah. And then is it in a, comes in a box like good and plenty? Uh, like a little bag. And then it was, uh, they, you know, you would they would tear it apart and share it. And, and here, did you, wanna... you try it? Yeah, I tried the squid jerky. Very like? salty. Salty and Fishy? chewy and not yeah, yeah, Fishy? and not um ah. not good enough to justify. 
<laughs> when I was in Barcelona for the Olympics, we got uh, Bob and I went and we got uh, squid in ink. Oh, dude, that's brutal. Mostly because we didn't know what we were ordering. Oh. Yeah, but uh, they brought it to the table like a waiter will, and uh, it was it was wiggling on the plate. No. Oh, yeah, the squid. Oh. And just a little and I don't like the flavor of the ink. It's not for me. There was only one person, other person in the restaurant that night. It Who was it? Honestly, Meadowlark Lemon. I have the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, I remember what? that story. That's I'm cool. I'm not making that up. Yeah. <laughs> and the waiter spoke whatever they speak in Gibberish. Barcelona. Uh, it's probably Spanish. I'm but the most probably. and the most beautiful English you've ever heard. Sure. Yeah. Everyone in the world is so much smarter than us. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's all there is yeah. to it. So they just, then why do they keep moving here? <laughs> well, <laughs> remember what I was telling you, saying about Top Gun and the enemy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, Tampa Bay won. Uh, what was the score there, Chick? 32 9. And uh, the Philadelphia Eagles uh, at one time 10 and 1 in the National Football League, and they lost six out of their last seven. And now they're on vacay. And the big rumor is that their coach, Nick Sirianni, who is a made guy. They don't worry about it. Uh, he's, uh, he's going to be dismissed, and uh, Bill Belichick is going to be the next head coach of your Philadelphia Eagles. Wow. That's the big rumor out there. Oh, really? Although Belichick met yesterday with the Atlanta Falcons owner, you remember his name, Arthur. Blank. Blank. They can't even say it. No. Still, his no. last name is so filthy. So like the, the, like the guy in the Superman comics. You can't even say, <laughs> say the name say backwards, and he goes to oh, the fifth dimension. Remember that guy? He was on an 180-foot, Christy, 180-foot super yacht is where they, he talked about Really? It. Yeah. <laughs> Yacht's not good enough. Super yeah, yacht. Yeah, yeah. You tell Man. me he's not an arch criminal. He's on a super yacht. How's Bezos' yacht doing? Remember, he was building it, and they were like, we're going to have to remove yeah. a bridge. He's been on it a lot. Oh, yeah. So, so it's functioning well. and out. And yeah. If I had a yacht like that, I wouldn't care if it was seaworthy. I'd just go down to the the, the dock and s sit on it. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like DiCaprio and Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, yeah. I just love that scene. Yeah. You wouldn't take it out at all? No, i just sit there. Doesn't it have a full movie theater? I think and it does, All yeah. kinds of things? And a bowling alley. And uh, Let's go. You, we should broadcast live from that thing, Tom. Uh, Call Bezos. Pi pickleball court. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. That's some, I'm sure someone's done that already. we got to get you pickleballing. I see you pickleballing in. We'll uh, get the knee fixed, then we'll pickleball. The, mid, uh, the mid 20s. But right now, I'd be do wearing a crutch. <laughs> really? All right. I see you ho hobbling around. And Jim Harbaugh interviewed yesterday with uh, the San Diego, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Los Angeles Chargers for their uh, head coaching vacancy just a week after he led Michigan to that national title. Is he going to uh, take the salary they're offering him, or is he playing Harbaugh? Oh. 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 Someone is on another level. <laughs> Working hard over here. Hey, Tom, he's playing hardball. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I didn't get it the first time. Well, didn't get or didn't want. Didn't want to <laughs> care. Yeah. Didn't, uh, here's Arthur Blank talking to Bill Belichick yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my moon yacht. You once called me a miserable old man. Uh, I was. Where do you think Belichick will go? Uh, hard to say. Um, there are people saying he could go to Dallas because uh, Mike McCarthy evidently going to be fired. Could have been fired, as I was saying, he was being fired. Yeah, going to be fired. Uh, also, the latest rumors: Mike Tomlin could be going to the Dallas Cowboys. He's huh. uh, he's done in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay, all right. So we'll see. I don't know. It could be anywhere. Could be uh, could be Washington. Boy, if I were him, I'd move somewhere warm, wouldn't you? After yeah. all those years in New England, well, I got all those sweatshirts. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you do with those? Do with yeah. <laughs> but he kind of saw it coming. He always cut the sleeves off. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah, but the, lo but the logo wasn't on the sleeves necessarily. What? Well, that would, have mm -hmm. that would defeat the purpose of wearing the sweatshirts if the logos were on the sleeves. You didn't get sleeve. all new ones, you see. Yeah, I've always wondered about that. Do, do you get to keep the gear when you're fired? <laughs> like, do, does, you know, Belichick get to keep his Patriot stuff? <laughs> Is there, there's well, a van outside to? with a guy with a clipboard. <laughs> yeah. All right, apparently uh, you have uh, six Super Bowl trophies <laughs> and uh, a couple of jerseys. Athletes, this is why you're nice to the security guard. Yeah. And game balls. So <laughs> when you're asked to leave, they'll let you go. Ahead, go. Take yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you fire me, are you going to come get the Bob and Tom posters that I've got? I bet you do. You don't even have an office here. You bastard. You no, it's at my house. I have an opulent office. Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Doors oh. are quite extensive. Why don't you go, go take a look at it? Maybe send us some pictures. <laughs> Maybe I will. Oh. You ever been walked out of a job? 
Um, Accompanied by somebody to... Uh, yes, the first job <laughs> and the only job I ever got fired from. That radio job where I was a smartass. <laughs> or what I'm doing now and have been. Have you been walked out of a gym? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had an really? excellent interview. And then uh, I worked for a... It was a... Did they call security right there in front of pharmacy me? Pharmacy benefits management company. So there was HIPAA stuff. So they had to oh, come and see what I was taking. I got you. At one point I go, uh, may I have this computer disc? And she was like, well, what's on it? And I go, <clears throat> the... Um, the, the, the screenplay I've been working on here. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, just take it. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't very good at that job. I, you were never fired, were you? No. No. <laughs> you always as ascend not. to uh, yeah. some... That job I actually quit, but um, yeah, oh, yeah, they had me. They still had to follow you me out. out. Man. Did you have any porn in your office? No. Oh, gosh, no. I was in a, a cubicle, uh, so everybody would have been able to see the porn. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The guy who fired me is, uh, was, the last I heard, in prison. Whoa! Something, well, invo something involving children. Ooh, oh, no. Oh, so, could have left that part another, out. In other words, he had porn in his office. I think he might have, yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. You, don't, you just don't like a story where I win. That's your problem. <laughs> I'm not sure that's anyone winning there. If, uh, now, chick what? <laughs> I'm not in Britain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, more sports coming up, Tom. We got the NFL playoffs continuing. Um, okay. And I'm 91 and 79 <clears throat> on the year. <clears throat> excuse me, picking mm -hmm. against the spread. This is free money over here. Yeah. Just come and pick it up. Just listen to me for the weekend, and then we'll split it. Jim Cramer was talking about you yesterday. He, he, he's betting me short or long or whatever it is. Whatever it is that's yeah, good. That's good. Yeah. Right now, this portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, what are some of the things you want to keep going on in 2024? You got a good start. Well, uh, you're crushing it already. Around uh, New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves. Um, instead of just expanding what we're already doing right, that's where therapy comes in. Uh, get your head organized a little bit better. Therapy can help you find your strengths and um, maybe help you uh, check off those extreme resolutions or get rid of them. Make changes that really stick. That's what the whole thing about therapy. And BetterHelp has a really good idea. They're taking advantage of contemporary technology. Uh, and I'm talking about that phone you're carrying around uh, to uh, get involved in the world of therapy. So how does it work? Well, you fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist. And by the way, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. But what's interesting is the therapy itself is done online. So it's extraordinarily uh, convenient and flexible and suited to your schedule. So find out what I'm talking about by visiting betterhelp.com slash BT show. The slash BT show thing will give you 10% off your first month. Once again, it's betterhelp.com slash BT show. Celebrate the progress you've already made in 2024 with therapy. You'll be able to be a better person and help everybody else too, uh, perhaps. So check it out. Once again, it's betterhelp.com slash BT show. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash B T show in this portion of the Bob and Tom show brought to you by better help coming up another attempt to get by the drug testing uh, in this case um, um, that wasn't necessarily her urine that she brought in we'll find out what happened there <laughs> also a, a brand new uh, trend in the world of adult sexuality hmm. we'll be talking about that trend and uh, a really odd thing at the uh, consumer electronics show that I think Chick's going to really like because it involves something new in the world of televisions. This is The Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to The Bob and Tom Show. This More increase his salary if we're going to get him to do it right. You're right. Art, I know one of your favorite words is yes. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, thank yes. you. Uh, yes. You've heard and seen the Say Yes to Michigan commercials, I'm yes. sure. Yes, yes. Uh, well, there's a billboard in Indiana. In fact, there are a lot of them. An Indiana yes, billboard yes, company has uh -huh. launched a war between yes. the states yes. by erecting a billboard that says, shut up, Art. Yes. Oh. No, it oh. says, <laughs> say no to Michigan. I see. <laughs> it says, say no to Michigan. Wander Indiana first. Michigan tourism officials are taking the slogan war in stride, but some Michigan residents are not amused. They've even complained to the Indiana Chamber of Commerce. Travel officials in Indiana say they have nothing to do with the billboard. On the other hand, they're not terribly upset about it either. Josephine Hickman, president of the Hoosier Outdoor Advertising 
company admits her billboard design pokes fun at Michigan, but she says there are say yes to Michigan signs posted all over northern Indiana, and Hoosier's feelings are hurt. Hey, we're a fun place. What can we say? Elsewhere in the news, Governor Milliken has signed a major supplemental spending bill containing more than $260 million. For JML News, I'm Art Bishore. No, you're Tom Gerswold. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not. Smarties News is brought to you by so, uh, uh, Auto Glass Specialist in Gaylord, Cadillac, and Iron Mountain. For fast, professional, Batoski, it's partly sunny and 64. JML News time is 7.57. Everybody. Well, Tom, one thing I want to say, first of all, your dick is bigger than this microphone. <laughs> well, is it my turn to talk? Because yours is smaller than this cigarette. <laughs> so uh, we'll just go from there. Thank you. Got to get some news art, so I have to cut short. I got to go in the air in five minutes here. Oh, Jackie O. Hmm. Ah, oh, Miss Universe Swimsuit Competition. Oh, I swim love her. Swimsuit? Suit. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had fun on the air here today. It Tom is from beautiful Cleveburg. No. Shaker Heights, Ohio. Tom Griswold recently worked in Florida radio, also worked in Petoskey radio right across the way at McDonald Broadcasting. Had a great time and really learned my stuff there. Thanks for the staff, Trish, by the way. Hi, Hi to the folks in Daytona Beach. <laughs> Get a sunburn from me. Bob and Tom, 24-7. 7.47, flying boats at New York to Seattle. Mm-hmm. And the, all of the toilets on the plane stopped working. Uh, I think uh, the funniest okay, part first is... first of all, they've only gone three hours. I'm sure you can hold it for three hours, can't you? You have children, don't you? Christy, we're all full-grown adults. Yeah? You're Barbie size. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the bathroom... Every hour, every half hour, a lot. You little Josh, little every... Josh has had a double dose of that in-flight chili of meal. Of course. Oh. All right. Did you hear this? First off, <laughs> he can see when I take a flight. He's one of the fattest things I've ever Tom done. assumes I would order the chili as if that were ever an option. <laughs> <laughs> However, and, and he said a double dose, meaning I requested seconds. <laughs> 
So, Nick, let's start with the basics. Are you a uh, married guy? No, I, I just uh, got divorced. Sorry to hear about that. It's okay. Lots of people get divorced. Um, Einstein got divorced. He did? Hey. Yeah, did you know that? Albert Einstein, arguably the most intelligent man who ever lived, got divorced. They should tell you that before you get married. <laughs> It shouldn't be, do you love her? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with her? It should be, do you think you're smarter than Einstein? <laughs> oh, so you're dating then? Uh, I guess. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to say I love you anymore. I hate that first <laughs> I love you. That's the worst. The first time you ever told a woman you love her. If they like you, they want to hear it. And when they hear it that first time, something comes over them. You know, their eyes get all wide. and Get that diabolical grin on their face. You, you can almost feel them saying... Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Rothband is our guest. Uh, Jeff is a fine, fine comedian. Um, I actually had to do that once. What? Be a pole bearer. And that, oh, my that's God. That's heavy. Yes, that's a heavy, heavy job. Yeah. I actually had to go to a funeral, and I was asked to be a pole bearer, and I, uh, <laughs> always a pole bearer. <laughs> <laughs> Never the corpse. Never the corpse. <laughs> Hi, this is Bob Kegel. Uh, on the way. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Got a letter here. Oh. From a subject we were talking about yesterday. Tom, if I could have your attention, please. All right. Go for it. Hello, Chick. My name is Josh from Fresno, California. Oh. You know what Fresno's known for? Uh, grapes. Raisins. Uh, raisins. Raisins and uh, Armenians. That's okay. Right. Oh. Um, <laughs> despite what that other guy said, the corona... Low alcohol, non-alcohol? Non-alcohol. That we were talking about yesterday. He is wrong. It was uh, spelled C-E-R-O. Right. And uh, the guy said it was, he had it printed on in his email, C-E-R-O, C hyphen A-I-R hyphen O. Well, this guy, Joshua, said, being a Spanish speaker and longtime Mexican, <laughs> oh, that's okay. it's pronounced Cero. Yes. As we yeah. kind of landed on that, I guess, mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. You and Josh are correct, and the listeners should stop being a windbag. Ah, there so, you go. Uh, love your show. Keep it up. And this is this is what, the new beer from? From Corona. Corona? Yeah, from Corona. Corona. And, the, and they're the ones sponsoring the Olympics. So. Mm -hmm. Anheuser-Busch is, is the main sponsor, but one of their brands is Corona, and that's what they're going to... F feature that's the way i understood this. makes sense they want to get the new sure. product out in, in front the paris, of as many eyes as possible paris olympics have okay. you seen the commercials for the paris olympics they're already trying to endear the athletes to us with, all right uh, with little uh, uh profiles and uh, leggy shots i believe is what they're <laughs> well, i certainly will look forward to that uh now um, yesterday we had an interesting news story about cursing christy do you remember the essence of the story the cursing story, we have it right here, yes. Yeah, swearing is apparently um, a little bit more um, acceptable now. The linguistic experts say that swearing becoming more widely acceptable. Most swear words are becoming less taboo due to the ways in which people are using them, such as to express surprise, to create humor, to show solidarity with their peers, or to abuse someone. That doesn't seem right, but... Well, I, it's it's interesting, and... Um, uh, I think when used sparingly, uh, certain curse words can be very powerful. Oh, sure. sure. Yes, yeah. yes, indeed. Um, I know that uh, when um, uh, certain podcasts came out and there was no restriction on language, a lot of them made the mistake of constantly cursing, and it started to lose its meaning. If you've ever listened to any of these, you've got four guys, and every other sentence has the F word in it. it it's not, after a while, it, it loses all of its punch. But uh, sometimes when you hear curse words, um, it can uh, really be powerful. And here's an example of a little behind-the-scenes situation in which uh, cursing, uh, well, it's been properly uh, 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 beeped for your uh, dining and dancing pleasure. You love his plain speaking, <laughs> straight shooting, no-nonsense approach to solving callers' problems. You tune in to his nationally syndicated talk show every day to hear the wise, insight, and savvy advice he gives to his callers. You see, caller, what you got there is a can opener. You use it to open cans. A can opener? Huh. I never made the connection. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Obvious. You're a lifesaver. Yeah, that's what I'm here for, caller. He's Mr. <laughs> Obvious, America's favorite answer man. There's not a situation that he can't handle with his sage-like wisdom and his quick-draw wit. Well, 
Waste not, want not, caller. <laughs> and now, Bob and Tom Productions is proud to present a side of Mr. Obvious you never heard before. Ah, oh, I hit my head. Damn that smart. Uh oh, oh was, was my mic on? <laughs> Now you can hear for the first time the Mr. Obvious that the censors didn't want you to hear. Oh. It's Mr. Obvious, too hot for radio. Oh, Mr. Obvious, too hot for radio. We can't even play it for you in this commercial. It's just too hot. So, uh, Mr. Obvious, I, I, I can't figure out why it's not working. Oh, well... Well, I can tell you why it's not working. Oh, oh yeah? Why, why is that? It's because you're a stupid <laughs> idiot. <laughs> it's not working, you dumb... Uh, cut. John, you can't say that on the air. Look, I'm sorry, but what <laughs> the f***? Hey, this dip doesn't even know how to operate his toaster. Come on, Bill. Don't we have anyone screening these damn calls? <laughs> all right, all right. Settle down, John. Don't settle down, John. Me. <laughs> and where the f***? Are those pictures I was supposed to see. Get down on the phone. If I don't get those pictures in here by 2 o'clock, I'm going to walk off this mother. You hear me, Bill? I'm not you. I've got money. You know what that means, Bill? That means I've got enough money that I can say you, Bill. Now give me some decent callers on the phone. These calls are ponderous, man. Ponderous. All right, John. We'll take care of it. And where's my orange smoothie? Damn it! I asked for a Kim Orange smoothie like 20 minutes ago. Mr. Obvious. Raw. Uncut. Uncensored. So, you see my point, caller? Um, but no, no I don't, Mr. Obvious. It, that's got to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry, wait a minute. What did you say, you piece of shit? You heard me. <laughs> Look, we've got caller ID. I'm going to have a couple of my gorillas down there getting medieval on your ass. How do you like that, Mr. Tuffy? Huh? I'll make you think stupidest thing you ever heard. I'll be watching for my yacht while the cops are fishing your bloated carcass out of the <laughs> river next week, pal. Hey, 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 look, take it easy, Mr. Obvious. Uh, I was just kidding. Oh, yeah, I just kidding, huh? Sounds like you just made the connection, right? You just made the connection, didn't you, mother? <laughs> huh? To order Mr. Obvious too hot for radio, call 1-800-EAT- That's 1-800-EAT- <laughs> And so, Mr. Obvious, that was the last time I ever saw her alive. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, caller. You've obviously mistaken me for someone who gives a. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Don't be a <laughs> moron. Order your tapes today. Holy! And, uh, as, you, as you can oh, see, cursing is yeah. is is back. Yeah, it's a, but uh, when used selectively. Unfortunately, that was uh, edited uh, for the purposes of the FCC. And uh, the big takeaway from that is that uh, people notice that uh, Mr. Obvious's first name is John. 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 <laughs> I love. That. They keep that on the on the on the down low, as they say. Right. Uh, coming up in sports, we've got uh, the NFL draft. They're talking about it. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the name, the name Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. Caleb uh, Caleb Williams, probably going to be the first overall pick, quarterback from USC, automatically becoming the most famous Caleb in the world. Don't you think? <laughs> uh, exactly. Maybe. Yeah. I'm There's sure. one actor, and I'll remind you of him when we come back. He's a guitar player. Yeah, um, Caleb Quay. Yeah. Oh, from uh, Elton John's, John's band. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Caleb Carr, author of The Alienist. Ah. Very popular writer. Oh, is that a, uh, that's a Cinemax series. Is that the same thing? Yeah, it's got to yeah. be. Right? Yeah, they yeah, turned yeah. that and, and also in the news today, um, the Mile High Club yeah. is in the news in an awkward way. I'm the only one that's a member, right? Are you a member, really? Oh, yeah. Member. Oh, yeah. kidding. Oh, uh, Pat's a member. Wow. wow. Did you did you do it Lindbergh style? No, it was <laughs> solo. Pat and I together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no, okay. We do for it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I thought we had a rule that if I said, you wouldn't say. I know. I, I, guess, guess, I guess that's, that's great. Yeah. Also coming up, the it worst Valentine's delicious. Day present of all time, I think. <laughs> Would you agree, Christy? It's not a great one, that's <laughs> Okay. Sure. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Yeah, uh, well, can, can you introduce Carl? Yeah, I'm Graber. Yay! Hey. And that's our bass player right over there. That's Carl. I am Carl. Yay! Yay. <laughs> that leaves, of course, our drummer. 
und I am Barry. <laughs> Barry. Hello, Barry. It's so nice to see all of you again. Hi, Barry. We've been on a tour of the world for the last 15 years. <laughs> wow. Well, that would explain. Right. Now, how far, how far yep. have you gotten? Why are we well, well we hit Lancaster. We hit <laughs> oh. Ocean. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So that was Shawana, Intercourse. Right. Then, let's see. Then in 99, we took <laughs> a Must have been over I the see. Green uh-huh. 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 Uh, it's, it's the electric Amish. And, uh, then they, in 2000. Okay. Oh, well, right. we, uh, we, I would have need the whole we, world. We have a limited amount of time here. Count. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You asked. Don't leave anything else. So, um, uh, fellas, I know you've got a couple tunes for us. Uh, yeah, um, as a matter of fact, the, um, <laughs> we've been hearing rumors. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. We've what? heard rumors that um, your own Christy Lee is dating an Amish fella. Oh, uh, that's, that's right. correct. That's correct. That is she's, true. She yeah. spends weekends churning butter and putting up barns. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's what we're hearing. True. We've heard a lot of people bragging about dating Christy, but it turns out this one's actually true. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, he, uh, uh, he used to uh, live up around us, and we heard the rumors, found out it's true. So we, we wrote a little song <clears throat> about uh, the situation. Oh, uh, oh boy. With, our, with Brother Daniel. Who Love to hear this. Oh, people. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> All set, Graber. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> man who is in danger <laughs> He met a heathen blonde but couldn't change her Her name is Christy Lee It's obvious to me <laughs> Odds are they won't be in church tomorrow oh. Secret Amish man Secret Amish man Number and took away your beer. <laughs> oh. They all told him, Don't date fancy ladies. You're asking for a one way trip to Haiti. But she must have begged him, please. Probably got down on her knees. <laughs> and I'm sorry, neither one of them was. Secret Amish man, secret Amish man. He's plugging in his tool now and stop doing things by hand. (laughs) Drinking maple syrup on a Sunday. Then reading news with Bob and Tom the next day. She's straddling both worlds. She's a half cocked Amish girl. <laughs> Christy V keeps begging for it both ways. <laughs> Christy's Amish man. Christy's Amish man. He's filling up her pie hole. She's polishing his wood. <laughs> Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Amish man. Wow. Woo! I uh, I think I'm flattered. Um, sure, you should. You know that yeah. that, that last uh, phrase didn't rhyme. I don't know if you guys. Uh, <laughs> it was really nice. Woo, hope he's uh, listening. Uh, well, he's probably he's probably polishing his probably building a, <laughs> probably building a barn. They're a lot yeah. they're a lot better than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the electric Amish. Uh, one- Your career needs a plan B. You're not helping the show. Where you're going, we don't want to go. Bob and 
Tom are seething. It's time that you are leaving. Because you're not helping the show. No, you're not helping the show. You don't say we didn't warn you. I'm warning you, don't do that. There's laughter ahead. I should be having a better time <laughs> if this is a part. This is Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. Why is like a recipe for a fight? They got a language, all of the vowels. Uh -huh. They embrace them, uh, you know, like an old Mrs. Beasley doll. All oh, the vowels they love. <laughs> <laughs> they can't stand the consonants. Uh, you know, twice I found nine U's together in a word. <laughs> you know, you see that, you could pronounce it. Ooh! But you can't. You have to go, ooh, 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 or you end up on the wrong island. <laughs> <laughs> they put two airports on the island of Maui. They call one of them something like Killy Willy Pilly, and then they call the other one uh, Willy Willy Polly. Uh -huh. right, I go to the wrong one. I'm the idiot. <laughs> Some guy at the airport in a flowered shirt. You know, You're supposed to be at Hilly Willy Pilly, not Willy Willy Polly, all cheerful and everything. Why don't you call one of them My My Pee Pee? Ow, ow. <laughs> Buy a consonant the next time you spin the wheel, Don Ho Ho Ho. <laughs> How'd you name everything over here? What'd you do, bring a stutterer over and tell him to hurry up? <laughs> hey, what would you call that tree? And, 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 okay, that's good enough. How about that mountain over there? Oh, my, 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 okay, that's good. How about those big birds? Oh, oh, yeah, keep moving. Those will be the oh, oh birds, won't they? <laughs> when grandfather dies, life will be strange. When grandfather dies, my whole world will change. When grandfather dies, I'll scream and I'll yell, cause I'll be rich as hell. <laughs> and then I, I figured That's I didn't need to write anymore. Hi, this is comedian Tim Cavanaugh. And Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show at the news desk. It's Christy Lee. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, chick. Song this time? I hope so. Big time song? There's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. And guess what, chick? Malibu Pink is now available Ooh, in Steven oh. Singer Jewelers 24 karat gold roses, the number one gift for Valentine's Day exclusively and only available at IHateStevenSinger.com. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, a horrible sports person. I'll explain why, and here's Tom Griswold. Who's uh, a horrible sports person? I'm a horrible sports person. I think you guys know that. But uh, I had uh, audio uh, uh, comments yesterday from the Cowboys right? uh, game where uh, Dallas lost big time to the Packers. A big surprise. Uh, Cowboys, once again, yakking it up. There's a couple <laughs> of videos online about how uh, the guy had a... Uh, he said... Uh, Keep this away from me. It's a choking hazard. Mm -hmm. And his wife goes, uh, what is it? And he says, a Dak Prescott jersey. Oh, oh <laughs> Choking oh. hazard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, here's, I had comments from Dak Prescott yesterday on his head coach. I'm sorry. On his interim head coach, Mike McCarthy, and I forgot to play them. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's all listen to them now, shall we? Mm -hmm. it's, I'll tell you, it's 30 seconds. So be patient. Good thoughts about Mike and everything he's done this year. Yeah, he's been amazing. Um, I, I don't know how there can be, but I understand the business. Uh, Thinking about firing him. In, in that case, it should be about me as well, honestly. I mean, that, that guy, I've had the season that I've had because of him. Um, we, this team has had the success that they've had because of him. And uh, I understand it's about winning the Super Bowl and... and that, that's the standard of the league and damn sure the standard of this place. So um, Damn sure. I get it, but add me to the list in that case. And, and you remember Jerry Jones yesterday? He was floored. Yeah. And it was the most, uh, what was it, surprise? The most surprise that he's ever been in organized sports. The Cowboys losing mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. I believe yeah. he was the most <laughs> surprised. Most surprised. Most surprised. Yeah. Most surprised. Yeah. And they pr they also printed it that way, too. Did they really? Yeah, I saw they just, they're wow. like, wow, they're not even going to correct the picture. Oh, here. Well, Did you see him crying? Oh, yeah. My he was gosh. very upset. Here's, uh, here's Jerry. This is uh, one of my most surprises <laughs> since I've been involved in sport, <laughs> period. Trying to remember, you know, he's got the angel of death facing him every yeah, day. Yeah, he does. So, you know, gonna, yeah. He looks like the angel <laughs> of death. That before. Remember that when he had uh, all the plastic surgery? That was about 15, 20 years ago. They stretched his. Uh, yeah. All, all the doctors him. came out and said, "We we got his face too tight." <laughs> oh, what happened? Take a look at. It. And uh, boy, he's uh, he's uh, uh, the NFL draft is coming up. It's not too early to start talking about that, is it? Someone say, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. is. Thank you. USC quarterback Caleb Williams has formally entered the NFL draft. That's right. He wore 
a tuxedo and tails and a top hat yesterday announcing that he was ready for the draft. He formally announced it, Tom. As oh, always. Yeah. That he... <laughs> I wish he would have done that. Uh, the former Heisman Trophy winner, uh, he's had a couple of prolific seasons, it said. Although he was crying with his mom in the crowd during a loss to UCLA and a lot of NFL players, past and current, took exception to that, say... It's a not a game for babies. Oh, it's a game for men. You never know what oh. he was crying about. Of course not. You Maybe he hurt himself crying. Maybe. In fact, it's, it's kind of a sign of uh, being very manly to cry exactly. in public. Emotional. What if you catch your tit in a ringer? What happens then? Uh, you probably cry. <laughs> you maybe, what? Uh, what, do you, huh? what are you doing near the ringer with your... <laughs> well, that happens. Well, uh, you know, there are bosomy women who would try to dry, <laughs> out, said, uh, dry out laundry. Something about a tube sock and bore out, bore out a wizard sleeve and a tube sock. Uh, that right? said, he definitely said wizard sleeve. Yeah, and I sure think as, as you put, he may be the most famous Caleb already. Yeah. Uh, the only other Caleb I can find is, and Josh will know who this is, and when uh, if he doesn't know the name, he will, after I remind him, Caleb Landry Jones. Yeah, yeah. He's in Friday Night Lights, and he's also in Get Out, Jordan Peele's. Mm -hmm. He's wonderful. He is. He's great. He's, he's incredibly hate, hateable. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. wonderful in that movie. So, yeah. Yeah, he's here on the list of famous Calebs. I, most of them look like they're... Uh, uh, parts of Disney shows. Caleb oh, really? is a name, uh, a name. Must have gotten very popular about 15 years ago. And there's no uh, nickname for it. Kale. Kale. Kale? Yeah. Is it Kale? Is Kale, Kale, Kale Yar Yarborough? Is, is that his name, Caleb? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. I don't uh, think it is. Well, um, well, good luck, Caleb. He's very healthy, though. Kale Yarborough. Uh, he's well, that's dead just nutrients. died. Yeah. Yeah. Healthy. Just died. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. I was referring to the Choked Kale. on Kale. Kale. Oh. <laughs> All right, next. You know, you got to really... This is boring. What else you got to stop that up to... Uh, nope, Tom, you know what time it is. Stupid World Records. Bring him right back in. Mm -hmm. Actually, I find this somewhat fascinating. A man from Spain... Falls mainly, Found mainly on, the, on the plane? Let's, oh. call him a, let's call him a Spaniard. Yes. Has broken the Guinness World Record for the most L sit chin ups from a helicopter in one minute. L sit. Wow. Wow. It's a, it, uh, Talk amongst yourselves. Let, let me clarify. It's yeah. not like E L like Spanish L. Like it's like it's an not, L shape. It's, it's not like L sit up. You know, it's uh, yeah. It's you have to hold your Possibly legs. Possibly you shouldn't have written straight it that out. Way. Uh, yeah. You hold your legs straight out and do a chin up. Except okay. it's he's hanging from a helicopter. All right. Alejandro Solar Tari. Not the blade, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> well, he flew off again. When you get, you'd get dizzy and vomit if you were spinning from well, uh, I think, a hole I of think the blade. You'd, you would die immediately. Of course you would. I was being silly. Remember that video of the guy who got caught in a jet engine and spit him out? And oh, he was right. Okay? Remember that? Yes. Remember that? He was okay. Yes. He was okay. Spit him right out. It's insane. Alejandro Solar Tari achieved the record. Sit chin ups after using a hovering helicopter's landing skid yeah. to pull himself up 26 times in one minute. Man, and you got to use your abs to hold your legs up. That's incredible. We well, are also dangling from a helicopter, yeah. although in, he was hovering. It, yeah, it's yeah, not I don't think very, very high. Not that high. Yeah. It looks very tricky, though, for the helicopter pilot. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the real skill, isn't it? Yeah, I would think. <laughs> a guy I went to high school with it was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. Um, not during the big years, though. Hmm. And um, well, tourism. And he uh, <laughs> oh, he became like a traffic uh, helicopter guy. He a, a drummer, really good. Is cool this guy. like your previous story where it ends badly? No, no. As far as I know, he's okay. okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, thank yeah. you. But he told me that flying a helicopter is like balancing a ball on a ball, Bye. and once you get it, it's okay. But yeah, learning I've had it's it very hard. tricky. Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, how high is he? Can you tell by the not the video? very. He, yeah. If he falls off, it's not going to be too bad unless the helicopter blade dips down and knocks his head off. Oh, yeah. Vic Morrow. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, um, it says that uh, it was very difficult for him to find a pilot willing to do this. No pilot was willing to fly the helicopter for the attempt. That was the big uh, mountain, the hurdle. Loop. Yeah. He finally found a pilot in Miami. He said, "Negotiate." Oh well. They're running drugs back and forth. <laughs> they uh, lasted several months before they could do Ooh, the attempt. This guy's hot. Oh, yeah? Oh, he's got to be fit, for yeah. sure, yeah. But he's also handsome in the face. Yeah, he's got some long hair. You know how I like that. 
Hmm. Yeah, it looks but just like see. your. It looks just like your husband. <laughs> My husband doesn't have long hair. Well, well that's, that's interesting. Oh, okay. That was the point. We could get him a wig. Oh uh, no, that's all right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, he's okay. Show that to Josh. Josh, he's guess, barely off the ground. Guesstimate how high he is off the ground. Four feet. <laughs> <laughs> <It's retro. laughs> so it's a dumb record. I was no, really. It's, he's very strong, but. I was so fascinated. It is kind of dumb to put the helicopter, <laughs> the helicopter is, pilot in that. Isn't the helicopter in danger? Yes. Yeah. I would think. That close to the ground, something could go wrong. Right, and yeah. You, you would think it would have to be counterbalanced. I would think so, too, but... Right? Yeah, who knows? Hmm. That's the guy I'd like. That's the true hero of this, the helicopter pilot. Helicopter pilot. <laughs> okay. You think Thank he'd learn to fly a helicopter, Tom? I know. A oh, pilot of any so type? Can you, no. can you imagine him no, I am, no. flying a plane? I can't either. That's why I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, uh, more sports coming up, including a uh, fabulous world record Oh, that uh, I can't wait to talk about. Okay. Uh, also, a new trend in human sexuality. I'm not buying this one hmm. as a trend. Do you think any of us have done it? No. If you were to guess. Uh, no. I would, no, I would okay. think not. All right. I would. I'll put it this way. Without telling you what it was, we had a news story about this not too long ago that involved a broken chopstick. Oh. Remember that one? Oh, is it sounding? Yep. Yeah, that's what oh. that would be. Yeah, the sound would be me screaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll find out why. That is supposedly a How do you trend find out you like that? in the realm oh. of human sexuality. Oh. Also, the Mile High Club in the news, um, and uh, the worst possible gift for Valentine's Day is in the news. Hmm. Uh, right now, how about a gift for yourself for 2024? Uh, this is a way to save yourself a ton of time, and uh, you might find yourself, uh, you've got to the point where it get, uh, eating's getting a little boring. I don't know, where do you want to go tonight? I don't know. What do you want to make? I don't know. How about HelloFresh? They give you lots of options at HelloFresh. And uh, they do the grocery shopping, of course, and they send you the food and you put it together. And, of course, we're talking about fresh ingredients from HelloFresh. So uh, maybe you've got that uh, food boredom going on in your life. HelloFresh can help you if you've got some special goals for 2024, by the way, with their new Calorie Smart and their new Protein Smart recipes. Of course, they've got good old-fashioned comfort food, too. They've got every option you could imagine every week, something new, 40 things every week, as a matter of fact. So check out HelloFresh, including the those quick and easy meals. You just spend a few minutes putting it together, pop it in the oven, and voila, as they say. Plus a lot less food waste because uh, you're part of a big team that's uh, buying fresh ingredients and sending them to you, and you get your share and don't have to throw a bunch of food away. It's uh, fun. You do a little bit of the work. And, uh, by the way, it's a great way to teach your kids to cook or to help yourself with your own cooking. Once again, HelloFresh. Uh, join, by the way, you'll get free breakfast for life while your subscription is active. See what I'm talking about. And find out what it means to get delicious breakfast items forever from HelloFresh. You join HelloFresh today, free breakfast for life. The code is BT Show free. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show free. That means one breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show free. Have some excitement in your food life by joining up with HelloFresh. I think you're going to really like the food. Christy, real quick, what do you got over there? Mozzarella crusted chicken with blistered tomatoes and potato wedges. Sold. I wouldn't know how I'm to blister in. a tomato, would you? I've learned well, you gotta, to HelloFresh. you got to beat the tomato oh, first, and then a bless, blister will... Oh. Extraordinarily no. not helpful. Uh, HelloFresh, uh, check it out. Uh, you're going to really like it. Now, um, also coming up, a very special request for something incredibly obscure that I think you're really going to love. Uh, and also, um, the dead guy in the back of that ambulance just woke up. Oops. Uh-oh. We'll find out about that. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, as a reminder, if you miss any part of today's show, we do have a replay of the show. In the last break, if you were with us, you know that we took a pair of um, uh, special panties known as the Club Vibe. And these panties have a uh, special vibrating device Very that uh, slips into a, a pocket in the uh, in the front of the most intimate area. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. in, the, in the front mm -hmm. naughty, I think. Right, is what the front naughty. naughty. Oh, yes, I like uh, that. In that zone. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, Josh put them on, and, and then uh, Josh, did you enjoy that? 
Yeah, yeah, not bad. And the way it worked, there was a button on the on. There's a remote control button, mm -hmm. and uh, Sadie and and Chick were able to press that button. It also well, and you talk into it, the sound activates it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we yeah. so as an experiment, we brought Dean, our producer, into the room, who's a very fine guitarist, and Dean happens to have a, a bass. Oh, Try no. playing a note on the bass, and Christy, see if it vibrates, please. All right, here we go, and and we should come up with a safe word. No, we should <laughs> need me to stop. Wait a minute. What note are, what yeah. note are you safe. choosing? Whoa, are you whoa. a safe, yeah. romantic safe note? Yeah, because no doesn't mean no. When no you doesn't. Safe the safe word should be uh, Getty. chick. Oh, I think Getty. Chick? Getty Lee. Getty, Getty Lee. Yell for Getty. Getty and we'll stop. Getty, okay. Chick would be fine. Oh. I like that. And remember, you don't have to listen to the safe word. <laughs> so no, when he hits the bass, tell me. That's if, not safe. Tell me if it vibrates. Bad advice, bad advice. We'll start out with it. We'll start out with the G string right here. Is that vibrating? Yes. Is the oh. still vibrating? Oh. Yes. Is it indeed the G? <laughs> yeah. Picks up ambient sound from okay, the It's not inside. I'm not okay. the I don't, spot. I, know. <laughs> I don't know how much longer we can go. Her face is already flush. I don't hey, this think. is foreplay. That was just a foreplay yeah. note. Okay. Dean, do something with kind of a beat let's, to well, it. Well, let's so see if she can take a low E right here. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Does that change the vibration? Yeah. Does it? Well, and it, it's sustaining. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm getting, I'm, I'm feeling a little left out over here. Uh, oh, do you have another you pair? You can't favor a, women. Uh, we do have another pair. Okay. Okay, here's the funny thing. There's kind of a, a little delay between... When you hit the When you number. hit the chord and then it oh, picks it up. <laughs> anticipation, oh, little oh, anticipation. Oh, we need consent. Yeah. Oh, boy. Does it vibrate You know, none hard? of the bass players I ever dated okay, did this. Look. <laughs> Tom, look at her face. I mean, she's... she's getting all right. Yes. Do you, know, do you know the bass line to Whip and Post? Okay, that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> no more news today, you guys. <laughs> uh, and I did not... Okay, okay. Oh, 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 wait, no, yeah. now, it looks like, now it looks like it's actually painful. Safe word. Getty Lee! <laughs> okay, there we go. Girl, the food was great. The company, even better. Why sit here all night long? Going on about the weather. I know it's our first date. And good girls gotta wait. But I just turned 83, and you said you're 78. The moon is full, you know what I'm thinking. Let's make love, we're old and we're shrinking. The hour's late, let's just do it on our first date. Radio. 24 24 we have uh, also a Matt Fulcher on here. Matt, um, I know you're, you're a rap fan. Do right, you, right. Do you curse a lot in your... Uh... Well, you know, on the radio, they take out all the curse words, yep. which means they take out all the words. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Oh, the sure, for the rap song. songs? Yeah. Sure. Turn on the hip-hop station, it's like, I'm gonna you up so bad, gonna in the to your mother, man. And after that, I'm gonna your mother, sister, gonna up, 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 up. <laughs> not, not even gonna kiss her. <laughs> something, something like that. You yeah. know, like Greg Hahn is our guest. <laughs> I went out with this one girl. Can I say this? Yeah. Sure. Get a load of this. I'm on a date. I was out with this girl, right? Here's what she says. It's true. She says, "Oh, I did something she didn't like." She goes, "Oh, you just lost some points." <laughs> oh, there's points involved. <laughs> it's a point system that the women have. It's a point system. Men, we don't know what's going on. All we know is it involves points, and all of a sudden, we're down. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my impression of her mother. <laughs> It's like, oh, you just lost some points. I'm like, really? How many did I start out with? <laughs> Don't ask any questions. You're just going to lose more points. Well, transfer my account to your younger sister. <laughs> Vegetarians always want to force feed you their food, mm -hmm. of course. I mean, the garden burger. 
The Garden Burger it tastes just like a hamburger. No, it doesn't. A Garden Burger is to hamburger what a post-op transvestite is to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it looks something like it, but one whiff. I'll we'll tell you, that's not tuna fish. It's cat food, and it's not fit for human consumption. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. Hi, this is comedian Sean Moore, and you're... <laughs> you, you, you. Are you a chicken? <laughs> What? I love Tom making chicken noises. Uh, we're hey. having a party here. Welcome hey, back. Hey, look, I'm just trying to get back in the swing of 2024, okay? <laughs> I can barely breathe. My knee hurts. A lot going tough. on. Have you, do you have that friend who's coming? Hey, I have a CEO since last year. <laughs> I haven't gotten that of you. you no, 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 not yet. <laughs> you ever, huh? You have that friend, Tom? I bet you do. You have one. I don't, actually. Christy has to have, has to have that no. weird friend of superficial, no. no substance, just kind of, you know. The Barbie friend. Really? Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm good. So is, is, don't you love the way Chick just makes stuff up? And, wonderful. Uh, no, I don't make it up. Up here, it's totally real. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I see. Um, Keep it real for you. That's all that matters. Right. Uh, what else is happening in sports? Anything we missed? Boy, that's a great question. If only we had a sports guy. <laughs> that's right. Stupid world record. A Wisconsin man. You'll find out, of course, has beaten his own Guinness World Record for the most Big Mac burgers eaten in a lifetime. Ooh. Oh, no kidding. Oh, this guy's great. He's He's been around for a while. Well, Since, wait a minute. In a lifetime? In a lifetime. So every time he eats one, he breaks his record. Sets a new record. <laughs> Since 1972, Donald Gorski, known as the king of Big Macs. Well, that's mixing brands. With him like Gorski, I think they'd go with like yeah, the czar. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. they keep King out of it? You know, they don't want to know get confused with Burger King. Oh. He's eating a total of 33,000. I guess Zara sounds too commie, though. Yeah, it's got a... McDonald's people want some, to... Somewhat of a... Do you prefer the Tsar with a T or the CZ? My favorite Tsars are the TZ. Uh, CS, yeah. They had yeah. the CZ on the, new, uh, the crossword puzzle the other day. Oh, oh. did they? Yeah, mm. at the CZ, Tom. Very ethnic. Yeah, well... <laughs> Which do you prefer? <laughs> That's right. Um, very, very ethnic. I prefer the United States of America. And well, of course. Freedom. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think... You don't prefer freedom. I know you prefer no. this country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, democracy is becoming, no, no, you know what? You bring yeah. up a good democracy, point, Josh. Democracy is becoming a little bit shaky. I like here. the way they present freedom to me. <laughs> That's how I like it. Yeah. I, I, for one, am glad they're there. I can't be in charge of me. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry. So uh, this guy's eating how many Big Mac? 33,400. Whoa. Wow. His lot. latest count is up from 32,340. In 2021. Oh, how do they prove that? You know, I was just about to say, it's been a while since I've had a Big Mac. The The, the way to say it is, it's been too long. Yeah, it's delightful. Absolutely. I really, because when I go, I don't get the Big Mac. I I should get the Big Mac. And by Never the way, had one. By the way, oh, oh, it's, like, it's, it's a meat can. Hang on, excuse me for a second. You've never had a Big Mac? No. Why don't, you, why don't you just move back to that czar country you're from and uh, it's got we'll tell you about sauce. living it's got in America. It's special sauce on it. I don't like anything that has a special sauce. Oh, you, it's <laughs> real good. Oh, well, this is really know. special, though. It's a party in your mouth. No. Uh, all sweet, right. Hey, you know what? More savory. for us. Try it. What about uh, McRib? You have a McRib? Love. I have had a McRib, but so, I gotta take the pickles off. So good. Hang on a second. Okay, I knew I. I got a story. I got to find it. Here it is. Um, McDonald's is bringing back the double Big Mac. It'll be available for a limited time at some locations beginning the 24th of January. I got a hack for you, but you need a knife. Okay. To, to scrape off the special sauce. <laughs> yeah. What you do is you get a double Big Mac. You take that middle patty or the middle bun. Take that out. Mm -hmm. Scrape off the, and then have you two right up, two patties right up against each other. Well, if it's a double Mac, you button. got four. Four. Is four. that what the That's double right. Mac, yeah. Big Mac is? Four. Let me it's see. I, I'm, I'm reading this for the first time. Yeah, because you got a bun, yeah. you got a patty, you got a bun, Here and it a is. patty. Yeah, so this the double is Big Mac is uh, How four beats. get that in your mouth? Mm. Well, uh, uh, well first I give you two glasses of wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we just we talked. Sorry. I'm sorry. Allow me, please. Okay. The double Big Mac features four beef patties. 
the Big Mac sauce, which you don't care for, Christy, which is your a big I mistake. I can't say I don't care for it. I've never had it. Uh, pickle, shredded lettuce, chopped onions, American cheese sandwich between three sesame there seed buns. Go. I've got to get it. Bingo. Wow. See, what you do is you get middle, you get rid of that middle bun, and then those four, uh, bang. Oh. Boom, I, boom, you boom, know boom, what? Boom. I appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm keeping the you're middle bun. You're not doing it. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love the middle bun. Wow. Boy, who, who came up with McDonald's? Who came up with the, it's returning? But not for long. It's brilliant. <laughs> the entire country looks forward to the McRib. Yep. <laughs> no, but I, I think that's very smart. Sure. It is. That's what I said. And I like I like the seasonality of things. I like it when they bring things and then they, they go away. Hey, Michigan cherry. What are we, what's time. coming up? The Shamrock Shake? That's got to be. Oh, yeah. yeah that's yeah. coming up. That's getting yeah. close. Yeah. In any event, yeah. to get back to this original news story, you have this guy, Mr. Uh, Gorski. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, Tom. He, uh... He says uh, he's blessed with a high metabolism and good health, which allows me to eat Big Macs without gaining a lot of weight. Okay. Listen really? to this. Yes. The biggest lesson he's learned, the 70-year-old Gorski says, I have learned to keep spare Big Macs in my freezer <laughs> oh. because I can't depend on McDonald's being open in a blizzard. He's right. He lives in Or, Wisconsin. you know, too dangerous to drive to. Whatever. Absolutely. Sure. Frozen Big Macs. He started eating uh, uh, Big Macs May 17th, 1972, uh, right after he got his first car. Gorski drove to McDonald's to get his first three Big Macs. Oh. Whoa. It sounds like a fat guy. He's got to be a fat guy. Oh, he's got to be a fatty, fat, fat, big. Um, big. Big, fat, 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 fat. As, uh, as long as this doesn't affect the ice cream machine, I'm okay. No, no, it's uh, it's always broken. Yeah. Well, it depends. If it gets under if it gets under fifty two degrees, the ice cream uh, machine won't work. You know, I'm, I'm trying to find a picture of this guy. Yeah. Um, they say he's healthy. Yeah, uh, I mean, some people do have those that kind of metabolism. Um, yeah, well, un unfortunately, on the Guinness World Record horrible website, they have a picture of some lady with a beard. Thanks. Oh, that's but there's great. no way to verify that. No, that's what I said early on. Maybe in he the kept story. his receipts. We don't know that he ate them. That's true. <laughs> yeah. You're suggesting he ate the receipts? No, no. No, there's no way to confirm that he actually ate 3,000 board or Big Macs. Why would he lie about it? I'm a QPC guy. I like the QPC. The Royale with cheese. That's that, see, that's like. the thing. Yeah, yeah. The quarter pounder with cheese yeah. is uh, a, a, damn near perfect. So <laughs> perfect, good. Perfect. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm a filet o fish Don't guy. be sorry. Those are That's good. And we're getting into fish sandwich good. season, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, mm, tasty. Pretty okay, well, uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. whatever it is, Gorski, whatever. Quarter pound I got a, I got a request I want to squeeze in. Oh, all right. Sorry. Um, this is somewhat obscure, and uh, we, uh, we like to uh, discuss the world of love. Yes. Especially with Valentine's Day approaching. And it doesn't always work out. And this is uh, from a guy named Rick Schrader, who, among other things, is a fine trombone player. In fact, uh, he was in a band with a guy named Kenny Gorlick, who you may know as Kenny G. But also a uh, very funny guy talking about uh, the um, uh, failure of his marriage. And uh, by obscure request, and I certainly appreciate this, thank you very much, uh, you'll see what went wrong here. Comedian Rick Schrader. You're talking about your ex-wife. Huh? Did you ever see her anymore? Or oh, no, no, no. I don't know what she's... Uh... The cord is severed. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know. Well, Did she like your comedy? Did she come see you and you do your stand-up comedy at all? Yeah. Yeah, sure. She enjoyed it, I guess. Um, come to think of it, she not, wasn't not, that bad after yeah, all. Not, not, yeah, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, can, look, look, can we... No, she was not big on approval. This is what I'm getting at in a roundabout way. Make sure you find the right person before you get married, because the first time I got married, I looked and I looked, and I thought I found that person who would tell me those five words every man longs to hear. Get off me, you're heavy. But, uh, <laughs> are you done yet? That's uh, <laughs> One of us should be enjoying this. <laughs> of course, my personal favorite, when you're inside me, I feel nothing. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I tell you this to bring up this. <laughs> this is a little bit of Rick Schrader arcane trivia. She said every one of those to me in bed. <laughs> I swear to God. No, she did. Yes, she did. Every single one of those. You are a man. Kind of, in six years, I, what a, kind of a schmuck am I? I had to have one point said, I love this woman, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't get enough of this. You know? <laughs> More, more stress. That, uh, and, wow. You remembered them word for word. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah they, they, those when, things that catch your attention. You know? <laughs> when you're inside me, I feel, feel nothing. nothing. I have That's to write that quote. 
That is a direct quote. Oh, wow. Because you, you, you know, we're working up there. I'm trying. You know, so. yes. uh, boy, I got it in myself that time. You know, I think I'm on a, I'm on a roll here. I'm, you know, but... Uh, you know, yeah, it's not fair. Well, I don't know. I, I, I shouldn't. Uh, you know, women, women have such a hard time achieving orgasm. I, 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 I uh, um, maybe it's because you got a big, fat, sweaty guy on top. of That <laughs> <laughs> would break my concentration. <laughs> <laughs> Trying, you know, very <laughs> doughboy thing, and all, you know, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> oh, you're the one, baby. You know, and, dear God, let it in. You know, I, uh, you know. Rick Schrader, uh, a little bit of Rick Schrader arcane trivia, uh, as he pointed things out. Oh, we do have uh, some Valentine's Day news coming up. Uh, perhaps the worst idea for a Valentine's Day gift on the way. Uh, yeah. We'll get to that. Um, and- uh, one more letter here to wrap up sports. Uh, hi, hi, Bob and Tom crew. My boyfriend listens every morning at 5 a.m. Uh, Central Time. While I appreciate his enthusiasm, his daily chant of... Take me like a dog, Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> ...has left me somewhat confused. <laughs> the humor is lost on me. He thinks... He and this comment... Take me like a dog, Elvis. ...is hilarious. I don't understand it. The context. Should I explain? I think you, mu- I think you must. Um, I believe it was a woman who was, what, 100 years old? Yeah. Yes. And uh, she was doing one of those, uh, what do you call it? Skydiving yeah. with what, tandem. What, the tandem skydiver mm-hmm. gizmo. How does that work again? Uh, you, you jump with a jumper. The inevitable. So instead of Geronimo... She ah. yelled, a, uh, uh, take me like a dog, Elvis. Gotcha. <laughs> That's how that emerged. Okay. The true fact. <laughs> Not that she said that, but that I did it like that. Oh. Thankfully, we have it saved because it will ne- you'll never. I can't. No, no, I can't. Be able to recreate. Take me like a dog, Elvis. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, I don't know where that came from. That, uh, it was so. fabulous. And then about a week later, she was dead. Yes. Sadly. Oh, but she well, had her. But you know what? She, she had, had her a great thrill. life. Sure. You yeah. need to be a hundred. Come on. Um, speaking of which. Uh, real quick, uh, Christy. Uh, yesterday we had an odd news story about uh, the federal government sticking their nose into the highway sign issue. Yeah. Um, as you know, occasionally there'll be a humorous highway sign, which I think is a smart idea. It gets people paying attention to the signs. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm surprised you are, are having this opinion because you don't like the big uh, video screens in cars. You say they're distracting. Well, they are. Well, that's I, what they I, say these signs I are. They're these distracting. Si- I think the signs are distracting. What, what, I mean, you're not going to... Sp- it doesn't take but a moment to read them typically well, some people are faster readers than others uh, the, well, you know yeah. I have do trouble. you have the story over there christy yeah the u.s federal highway administration banning humorous and quirky electronic messages posted on highways and freeways across the country those intended to be funny will be banned in 2026 because they can be misunderstood or distracting to drivers It said signs should be simple, direct, brief, legible, and clear, and only used for important information, such as warning drivers of crashes ahead, adverse weather conditions, and traffic delays. Among the messages that need to go include, use Jablinka in Massachusetts. Visiting in-laws? Slow down. Get there late from Ohio. Just fine. Come on. Don't drive Star Spangled Hammered from Pennsylvania. Uh, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're not... All, let's face it, they need better writers, but uh, here's one from New Jersey. Yeah. Will be blunt, don't drive high. That's, that doesn't even rhyme. No, but it's kind of semi-hip. They're yeah. using the term blunt. Focus, focus, drive with focus. That's from New Jersey. Great song. I like this one. Nice card. Did it come with a turn signal? <laughs> yeah, kind of just, uh, These are helpful. The, the reason I bring it up is I, I received this nice letter um, from um, Mrs. Uh, Schultz. Hi, Mrs. Schultz. She writes, you were talking about how they're going to ban quirky highway signs. Um, and uh, Tom made a joke about an Amber Alert. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course Uh-oh. he did. Well, I mean, it was I'm certainly somewhat inappropriate. I was just thinking it would be, you know, somewhat humorous to... Uh, uh huh. Uh, you, you know. Please continue. <laughs> What's four foot two wearing jeans and a hoodie? <laughs> uh, little Timmy <laughs> lost. Him. Sorry. Um, uh, that was uh, worse than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I Mrs. Schultz worse. Writes uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. We had a silver alert. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that happens no. all the time. Oh, yeah. Florida all the time. Now, that's, you want to explain what that means? That means an elderly person usually has lost uh, his way or her way. It happens to me every now and then. I'll be out in the driveway getting my trash cans, and somebody will, are you okay? Do you need a silver, silver alert? Um, <laughs> hey, Pops. Hey, Pops. In, in any event, there was a I'm silver alert. Asshole. There was a silver alert on the highway sign, and it posted their license plate, mm -hmm. which was 3HR... T O U R. All right, just a second here. Three H R. Oh, I got it. Yeah. Three T O U R. T O U R. So the oh sure yeah. They're they're still, they're looking for an old lady in a car with the three hour tour vanity plate. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Schultz says um or Miss Schultz sorry I uh, found it hilariously coincidental. Yeah, uh, she could be gone. On hope an they, island. Hope somewhere. they found her somewhere yeah, besides. Uh, uh, certainly, island. I hope they found her. By yeah. the way, I'm not trying to. Uh, but there, there you go. So uh, no more humorous highway signs. I, nope. I rather like them. Well, you have till 2026, so you've got a couple years. <laughs> yeah, well, let's take action. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the government, <laughs> yeah. that's the government for you. We're going to take action now. Well, they have a stockpile of two years. witty remarks. That they've well, they've got to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Tom, you're, you've been teasing uh, the world's worst Valentine's Day gift coming up. Well, yeah. What do you guys think of this here? Uh, Jeffrey writes in, he says... Uh, uh, you were mentioning tattoos at one point. My ex-girlfriend, if, if you think this would be sweet for somebody to do, maybe... <laughs> Your ex-girlfriend? Well, uh, got her kids' pictures tattooed on her back. Yeah? Huh. It killed the sex drive. As you're looking at her kids. Wow. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Being taken like a dog. dog Elvis. Elvis. Oh, yeah. oh boy! Yeah, why would you do that? Yeah, that's the same rule. You don't have certain pictures in the bedroom. Leave your shirt on at least. <laughs> you know. This is her children on her back. She could oh. leave her shirt on, and then he wouldn't see. I like to have, like to have this picture of Grammy right next to my bed. <laughs> well, that's nice. And why would you have pictures of your kids on your back? You can't see them anyway. I don't know why this would be a choice. But, Probably uh, a lot of uh, what they call real estate back there. That's that there's more still. room. Yeah. Man, I can't imagine how much that hurts. Oh, Man. oh boy. Yeah. That's why you won't see me getting tattoos. No way. No. You've got, no. like, what, 12? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Those are real? Do you have oh, any on no. your back, though? No. No, on my back. See? Because you want to see yours, right? That's you right. Enjoy them. Which nipple is the bullseye? <laughs> I told you that in college. It's right. The left is gay. And here we are. The left, left is, is right, right is left wrong. Left is right, right is wrong. Bullseye's on the left. Oh, oh. right. Oh, no wonder people have been giving me weird looks at the gym. The arrow's above my ass crack. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says, no bleach. Okay. Uh, coming no up, bleach. We, have, uh, we have an unusual thing in the world, apparently, of, uh, of human sexuality that I find very disturbing. Um, we have an OnlyFans success involving a farmer. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Josh, I know you're the big OnlyFans guy here. And um, a, uh, it's a real uh, problem. A, a Mile High Club story that's kind of interesting, I think. And uh, something for Chick involving the uh, Consumer Electronics Show in the category, Who on Earth Would Want This? Hmm. We're going to find out what that would be. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Catch any part of the show. show coming up ladies and gentlemen bob and tom 55 percent said self-help books have had a lasting impact on their life nearly half write down their favorite quotes from books that have inspired them among the most memorable sayings people recall are the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step that's exactly right never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game be afraid but do it anyway 
Isn't that nice? Oh, that, that is, is nice. nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a fool. <laughs> oh, he's he's dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, 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 he jumped off. A, he yeah. jumped off a cliff. He's a bunch of jump. Yeah. I'm scared to death. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24/7. Hey, it's comedian Roy Wood Jr. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. I left work early, drove right home, didn't know you'd be here. Well, now that you are, there's only one thing I'd like you to do, my dear. my clothes take them all off baby honey pull down the shades turn down the lights lock up all of the doors if I catch you wearing my clothes again honey I will file for divorce Bob that skirt doesn't even go with that blouse now put on this apron and go do the dishes. Essential Morning Radio. All day and all night. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom Radio. Are you uh, are you a single guy? I used to be married, but I'm divorced now. Yeah, my marriage wasn't working out. I, I was driving down the road one day, and my wife ripped the rearview mirror out of the windshield and beat me in the head with it. <laughs> what? Why? You'd have thought nobody had ever made love to her sister. But <laughs> 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 oh, <that> I'm fine. <laughs> she was just as bad. Yeah. She, she used to brag, I can count the number of men I've been to bed with on one hand, and then she'd do it, too. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty, <laughs> twenty. And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. <laughs> good morning, sunshine. Bob and Tom. Um, stupid. You're, ruining the, you're ruining the show. We're all <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're being called stupid by one of our co-workers. Oh, no, ignorant visitors. Yeah, I think he did say ignorant. slack jog morons, I heard. Oh, is that what you <laughs> <laughs> Too dumb to be insulted, I heard. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this email starts. Yes. Uh, my name is Michael. Hi, Michael. I have a tomato pin cushion. Would anyone like it? Oh. Oh, those are, man, they're the, classic. They're cla uh, they are the they classic. Are, yep. Wouldn't they soak up odor or something? Wouldn't they? What? Is it like a, a pin house cushion? or something? The pin cushion? Yeah. Probably, like any kind yeah. of Porous. cloth material you would have. If you use it as a suppository, I don't think. Oh, uh, okay. I was, smell like the I was trying to find out what the yeah, slang. Yeah, I'd like to shove it up my butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the slang term for $1,000. Rack. Um, uh, grand, of course. <laughs> Ten grand. Good one, Tom. Thanks for <laughs> ferreting that out. Oh, Appreciate it. I'll talk to you, Christy. Okay. Important investigative work over there. <laughs> I, I, and I, gotta tell, I don't buy this. Well, a, well a bozo. <laughs> I'm using it from now on. I, I like it. Hey, man, that <laughs> car cost me 27 bozos. No, no one has I ever like said that. 27 bozos. I've never heard that. That's I, funny. I like That's hog a hunt for dollars. What? How much that cost you? 500 hogs? I like hogs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hog for dollar. That's just for a single case. This says a stack. I don't I... A Never stack mind. is a thousand dollars. I don't know why I answered your question. You really don't want an answer. <laughs> it's no, not really I, a stack. It's only ten one hundreds. That's not a very big. Just stack. have Al Jackson tell him it's a rack, and he'll yeah. believe. Yeah. Yeah. A band, hmm. and then here we go, chick. Um, a D note or a rack. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Why is it a D? Oh, um, what am I missing? Why D note? Because a uh, uh, mm. thousand in uh, Roman is D. Uh, hey, no, it's on. not. Everybody knows that. <laughs> a brick is a hundred thousand dollars. And this says ten thousand is a stack, or uh, I've heard it called a king grand. Why did they? In that great song by uh, uh, someone we've never heard of. Yeah. Sea level. Moby Great. Chuck Lavelle. Here we come. Sea level. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why do they put all the, uh, the TV shows in um, Roman numerals when they do the cop? You know, at the end. 72. Yeah. MMCX. It really does seem silly. Yeah. Just put them. They're trying, to, they're trying to lend themselves a little bit of class. Hmm. Roman yes. numerals are Debbie classy. Swallows Dallas, MCX. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Swallows Dallas. She Dang. disappeared, you know. Huh? Debbie did? Yeah, that actress disappeared. Disappeared? Well, she did Dallas. She was tired. I guess. Yeah. I gotta take a break. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Dallas. Uh, no, uh, it, she in a protection. What do you mean room? Houston's on the phone? <laughs> Tell him I'll call him back. Yeah. I just got done with Dallas. Can you give me a break? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now slang terms for money in general. You said your prefer, uh, you, you prefer what, uh, Josh? Hog. Bread. It was me. Bread in my I drill. said hog for a dollar. Have you ever said that to anyone seriously? Bread? Yeah, how much bread was that, man? Hey, man, I'm a little light on bread. Really? You said that? <laughs> I'll <laughs> make the, you some sourdough. <laughs> that's the worst part about piano, man, is bread in the jar. No, it's awesome. It's hate very it. character-driven. A rare mm. misstep. Bread in my jar. <laughs> it's only a, a snapshot of the crap he was going to release with the doo-wop era of Billy, oh, Billy Joel. Joel. Oh, the longest time. Ooh, longest you? time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. You don't care. Oh, well, let me think. <laughs> no. I, I got I got Italian restaurant in my head yesterday saying that all day. I love that. That's a great song. What about Uptown Girl? Do you like Uptown Girl? No. I hate, hate Uptown it. Girl. What is wrong with you guys? It's just I like it's still rock and roll to me. What about Captain Yuck. Jack? Uptown Girl, when you see Christy Brinkley who can't dance to save her life in that video. Uh, you know something? It doesn't matter. Uh, Kitty's got claws. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bambi Woods. Is that the, the What's Bambi Woods? Debbie from Debbie Does Down. She went oh. missing, huh? Bambi Woods. Yeah. Okay, now, I've heard this recently. Uh, uh, Sorry to get in your way. For money, uh, cheddar. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard that. I've heard cheddar. Cheddar. Yeah. That's as silly as bread, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard cheddar. Really I've heard uh, pickles. What about pickles? clams? Pickles. Yep. Oh, I've yep. heard clams. Oh, my mom clams. said that all the time. Yeah. Clams. Okay. Ten clams on his way to the Husco. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was your, was your mother in a, a gangster's yeah. mall? Was your mother Jimmy Cagney? <laughs> she grew up during, she, she, she grew up during the Depression. She was born in like 2017. Or, I mean, excuse me, 1917. How about, uh, I've heard wad. Yeah, wad. For yeah, money. Sure. You know what I've heard the word wad for? What's that, chick? Spur, 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 spur. You know, like you shot your wad on yeah. the... Uh, uh -huh. Ejaculate, you know. No. <laughs> No, that's not what I was referring to. Someone might say, hey, listen, I can't go. I shot my wad on... Uh, Is it shot groceries your... this week. Groceries, I don't have anything yeah. Do you left. shoot your wad or blow your wad? Blow your wad, yeah, for money. Yeah. I've heard I've heard both. Have you? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I've, I, th I thought it was shoot your wad. I, uh, Man, maybe it's am, I, am I mixing up my metaphors? <laughs> if you, Let's see. Bambi um, Woods, best known for her appearance. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I thought we were over this. Game. As the title uh, character in 1978 film Debbie Does Dallas has disappeared. I just Last said that. seen in 1986. Uh, Jim Clark, who coined Woods' stage name, Bambi Woods, has refused to divulge her real name out of respect for her request for privacy. She's self. She uh, imposed... Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, she could so, be a principal at a school now or right, something. Right, so it may not yeah. be anything oh, right. nefarious. God bless her. Or, yeah. Okay, good. She's from Pierre, South Dakota. Did you know that? Yes, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. um, Ambie she Woods. made uh, some wads in her lifetime. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. she made wads, shot, took Caught some. some. Took Caught some. Caught <laughs> some, yeah. <laughs> she did, yeah. You uh, a fan of that, right in the face? Oh, uh, could we... Uh, I insist on it. Oh, Christy, sorry. could we move yeah. on? I tried to t change the topic. How about you, Christy? Foolishly right? mentioned oh, my that. God, my... Get next. Your, next. The San Antonio Zoo <laughs> is selling go. a hippo poop-scented candle in honor of Valentine's Day. Well, this is so ridiculous. That's not desirable at all. <laughs> no, you know, so, no. So that's my question. Is this one of those things you're supposed to get for a, an, uh, an ex? I don't know. Created in collaboration with the Stinky Candle Company company the zoo's new hippo love candle quote captures its famous hippo timothy's signature scent of hippo poop hippo timothy yep mm. the zoo explained that hippo poop is the cologne of the hippo world and is used to impress potential mates really the candle will set you back 14.99 and the zoo added if you're looking to turn up the heat and attract that special someone our poop scented hippo love candle is the riz you need the Riz. The, Riz. the Charisma? What it says. Wow. R-I-Z-Z, -Z, Riz. Uh, I'm oh. out already. Does it come in a spray? Uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently. Like the hippo. That's how the hippos Isn't that how they... Yeah. 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 Really yeah. something. Um, Remember their, their, their tail spins around to get it away from their body? Yeah, sure. Like really. a helicopter. 
do is this like you're supposed to light this when the party's over? You want people to leave? <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I don't know. Like I'm gonna leave. It smells like hippo. <laughs> Fa- favorite candle scent, Tom? Do you have one? Vanilla, that's, soft that's cotton, maybe. Maybe a nice lavender. Ooh. How about I, a sea breeze? I like love rose. Love. I'm rose. not in charge of that at my house. Um, of course not. Hmm. So, what are the flavors that you have in your house? I, they're very nice. I don't know what they are. Will you do me a favor? Will you just go buy one candle? And put it out on the counter and make no mention of it and see what happens. <laughs> I bought two candles for uh, for Christmas. What is that right? What happened to you? One of them went back. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Return a candle. Tom returning a candle. Return a candle. <laughs> Tail between his legs. <laughs> she didn't like it. Sorry, do you have a receipt, sir? I can't take your candle back without a receipt. She doesn't care for sandalwood. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the aura. Too masculine. A member of our staff made us wonderful candles. Yes, I used them on Christmas night for my dinner. Campfire scented and... um, Mine were the clean or whatever, linen. I don't know what it was. I think these were um, made from... uh, Actual human fat. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I, these were these from were, people. The ones that you bought for your <laughs> gal for Christmas? Yeah, I had I had my little girls present these to their mom, Ooh. you see. Ah. And, you're, and she and looked at one of her daughters and said, no, take it back. No, no, no. They, 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 uh, I don't think, are the girls in the car listening? I hope not. <laughs> yeah, one of them's going back. So. I hope they're in the car listening. How did the, uh, I they're thought not, you said. They're on a two-hour delay. You were going to get them a pony for Christmas. What happened to that? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I so I, said reindeer. I want to get back to this uh, hippo poop candle. Yeah. So no one's ever going to light this thing. It's just. Well, we is, if let's say we got one, we'd light it, right, to see how sure, it smells. Well, it we should order one and see. Well, I'll to, order yeah. one for us. Don't you like? There was a chilling uh, couple of weeks in our existence here in the studio where you. For some reason, started lighting a candle in the morning. Oh yeah, what was yeah, happening? Well, I like I that, and uh, we were all worried that we we're going to have to talk you out of doing and it. And I believe it was rose scented. Yeah, and you. Yeah, if that I, was thank uh, goodness you stopped. Kind of that was from uh, the uh, Pilates studio I go to. They presented everyone with a. Oh okay. Nice but why candle. Why were you lighting it? Over so there? you felt like you should bring it in here. Well, so if I lit it at home, it would have been thrown away. <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously not uh, not understanding the way my household works. Don't you kind of like that though? Do you really want to be in charge of the candles at your no. house? No. Yeah. See? <laughs> well, you're in charge of the candles at your home. Well, sure, but I live alone. And oh, I have many you... uh, pumpkin scented. Oh, man, gosh, we, hey, we were sent to some wonderful I bourbon give, something. Give you some advice. Yeah. You're going to hear this later, okay? Yeah, yeah. Do you know how you make me sound? No, it's just I, you I need I, to stop. I don't have the, uh, the. That's not in my sphere of. Of, She's uh, doing taste. you the favor. Yeah, it's by, fine. by making sure the house is, smells nice. And I, I, when I went to this, I went to this candle store. And I talked to them, and this guy recommended. One was like a Christmassy candle. Sure. And the other was something else. And Oh, I went to that store, Chicks with Wicks. <laughs> no, um, I, I think that's, uh, it's the only candle store where you have to get a loan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, uh, very have have you been to that place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a candle <laughs> store that's shaped like a giant candle. Oh, sure, yeah, out 70. there on 70, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. I've never been. But yeah. it is cool. Yeah. yeah. And every now and then they turn the wick on on top. It's oh. hilarious. It's hilarious. Yeah. But I got a good loan rate. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. 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 Chick, do you like the phrase, I got my wick wet? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Because of the right stuff they use that. We're making movie. candles in a month or so. The, my lunch, girl lunch group. Oh, We're going to go make awesome. candles. Oh, that's fun. Oh, wow. I took I've my girls to that it. for a birthday party. They oh, loved really? it. There's no difference between that sentence and, <laughs> so I'm getting beaten at noon. <laughs> no difference. You know what? I'll I take a beating. I was going to invite you yeah. to come. I hope one of you take the Johnny Tremaine's their hands. Are you going <laughs> to make it? Are you going to? You should invite uh, all yeah. of us to yeah. come. Yeah, you should come. Hey, uh, time to make the candles. <laughs> I want to make it fun. Hey, hey, hey there, bro. What's the name of one of your friends? Uh, Brenda. Brenda! You <laughs> care for the term getting my wick wet? <laughs> yeah, you like it, Brenda? You like that, Brenda? <laughs> Sorry, hey, Brenda. They got, uh, they got that uh, hippo uh, hippo dung <laughs> candle there, Brenda. It's, uh, it smells like Harvey Weinstein's prison cell. Oh. <laughs> hangs, hangs a lot of, uh, lot of uh, aromatic ass. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, Christy, what do you got over there? Change the subject. Uh, well, we're sake. gonna have dating etiquette coming up if you're on the um, what, the matching sites, if you will. <laughs> Tech innovations for chick. Pardon we me have... while I orgasm. Okay. <laughs> well, and that's good dating etiquette. That's a... Really? <laughs>
Yes. And uh, and uh, we also have um, interesting news about uh, reviving a dead guy. Uh, it's all coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Get a look at today's show on our YouTube channel. To be explained elsewhere. Q95 Night Ranger when you close your eyes. It's 842. You're with Bob and Tom on a two for Tuesday. Good morning. Howdy. Great. Holmes. Holmes. <laughs> Sherlock. <laughs> Let's play word association. Okay. Howdy. Holmes. Sherlock. Holmes. John C. <laughs> <laughs> with Bob and Tom. Holmes. The human tripod. Uh, I see. Okay, I'm sorry, Bob. That's all right. You From 6 a.m. and for the next bad. four hours, Bob Cavoyan and Tom Griswold yeah, fill the airwaves with cool. jokes and pranks that range from cool. silly to hilarious <laughs> and from body to sex. Uh, why is sex like air? Why is sex like air? I give up, Bob. Because it's no big thing unless you're not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> they deliver a national like lampoon delicious. sort of humor that leaves the audience <laughs> laughing while wondering how Q95 can broadcast some of the things they say. Half the jokes, the joke is in your mind. The joke isn't stated outright. Mm -hmm. The person has to put something into it to get something out of it. Yeah, they're fun and uh, people yeah. like them. People enjoy them. They laugh at them. And there's an alternative. You can always change the channel. Mm -hmm. But people aren't. After two years on the air, Bob and Tom have taken Q95's morning show to the top of the volatile morning FM ratings. WFBQ is the third radio station the Zany team has worked for. After six years together, they've got the routine down pat. Bob runs the audio control board, plays straight man, and provides the program's famous laugh. Amateur phylactics. <laughs> Amazing concept, I think, and I think it's going to be Tom far. sits an amount of no Notes and papers to provide the program's often quoted jokes oh, and many of its voices. Oh, hello, Mahandas. Hello, Bob. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I am fine today. <laughs> hello, Tom. Hi, Mahandas. You look very good today. Thank you so much, Mahandas. I can much of their the banter is off the cuff with an occasionally rehearsed punchline well, off mic during a song. And I, I know Only if it makes you right. late for the ceremony. She's controversial. She's provocative. She's the famous sex therapist, Dr. Ruth Weisboner. Good morning, Dr. Ruth. Good morning. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Dr. Ruth. Their regular spoof on Dr. Uh, Ruth Westheimer features some of their more risque humor. Is it wrong to have sex before you're married? Hmm. Is it wrong to have sex before you're married? Well, no, as long as you're not late for the wedding. <laughs> Bob and Tom's task of filling oh, 20 okay. hours of airtime every week is made easier by several regular characters phoned in by people around town. Nightclub owner Sonny is a favorite. Great approach. How are things going on at the track? I know you're running the mystery flesh tent this year. Everything is going just fine, Dolly. Uh -huh. I bred that baby up, throw it in some shortening, and uh, serve it up. It's the mystery flesh tent, Dolly. Mm -hmm. It's located, of course, in turn one. It's right there in turn one where people seem to be the most hungry and the least discriminating. Uh -huh. <laughs> Other characters are Voiced by regular visitors to the studio. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Uh, Tiger Don Bardo. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Your Highness. Good morning, Mr. Nixon. Midday you know, personality uh, Jay Baker contest. voices the spoof Just on Richard days. Nixon. Now, do you remember... Ronald Reagan sure. visiting the German cemetery over the weekend. Oh, that's right. They, yes. the, the media referred to it as the Nazi cemetery. Mm -hmm. You know, I was the one that put him up to that. I see. I said, babes, this is going to be so beautiful for your career. Trust me on this one. <laughs> I it told figures. them, I said, when I was a young boy, I heard the phrase, the only good Nazi is a dead Nazi. Mm -hmm. I said, Ronnie, you can't miss a whole field full of dead Nazis. <laughs> You slide over there, you put the wreath down, the wreath, and you're cruising. Bob and Tom say they get said, very few complaints from listeners as they poke oh, fun at every special interest group people. imaginable. And station yes. management has left them unrestrained on the limits of their humor. After two years, the result has been high ratings, a devoted following, and two happily transplanted Hoosiers who say they just might stay to grow old and gray on Q95. Could be. It's very possible. In fact, uh, it's already started. Yeah. <laughs> Bob's getting great. Yeah. Tom's getting old. Yeah. <laughs> this is Greg Todd, Channel 6 News. Oh, I feel so much better now. You know, Bob? Yes. I don't want to say that most of the women that you go out with have questionable morals or anything, but... Last
<laughs> state of California mm -hmm. is uh, apparently they're in the process, I guess, of banning the mylar balloons. They're yes. called yes. the small ones. The silver the ones. Passed silver in ones. the Senate, it's on its way. Because to the apparently these Senate. balloons cause massive power outages. I can see it's an important, serious business. Mm -hmm. But when, in the course of learning about this, we found out there actually is a group called the Balloon Council. Yeah, this is someone's job, someone's life. They have to take it seriously. I'm sure there are a lot of issues with balloons. Oh, I'm sure. Nothing to laugh at. Oh yeah. It's a serious organization. Oh, absolutely. Dear Bob and Tom, mm -hmm. writes Gary. Gary! I want to know what every other American wants to know. What is the Balloon Council doing about inflation? Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gary, Gary. thank Gary. you for your letter. Oh. <laughs> it's an old uh, Eskimo trick uh, of how to uh, catch a polar bear. Now, you, what you do is you go cut a hole in the ice. Right. Right. And then you take little peas and you place them strategically four inches apart all the way around the hole. Right. And a polar bear will crawl up, and he'll look at it in very much curiosity as what is going on there. Now, when he bends over to take a pee, you kick him in the ice hole. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening to Bob? Yep. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the deal's desk. Yo. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello there. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's the one, the only Tom Griswold. Unusual letter here. Oh. Um, go, mm. man, go. Uh, uh, apropos of nothing, uh, Robert writes, um, my porch has a bunch of yellow snow on it. Uh-oh. However, I am tempted to eat some. Hmm. What? Forget, forget the old adage. All right. Three reasons. What? One, fresh snow. Yeah. Two, no dog footprints. Yes. And three, two, uh, burst bottles of Mountain Dew. Oh. Oh, boy. That is like tempting. Like a slushy. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nature's slushy. Yeah. <laughs> you ever make the, uh, does anybody do the snow cones with snow from outside? Or hang on, yeah. Sure. Do that? kid yeah. who did that, yeah. yeah. Did you? Yeah. Oh, never did that. Remember just filth. Yeah. Remember yeah. The, the toy we had? It was the shape like a snowman, a crank on the back. You put an ice cube in his yeah. head. And it makes snow cones. Like a shave to the ice cube? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, fun. Yeah. Cranked it in the back. Cool. It was spit cool. out ice. Hell yeah. Now, uh, we had an interesting news story yesterday. Good memories. About um, <laughs> uh, how 47% uh, of Americans think they could write a self-help book. Yep. That's right. Uh, they've uh, they've learned so much about life in their lives that they're they're I capable of writing. Fifty five percent of the people surveyed said that self help books had a lasting impact on their life. Okay. I think that's, yeah. That, that forty seven, I think, slow. You think a lot more people would write Absolutely. one? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, All chicken, right. Chicken soup for oh, the... Wait, oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh. Wait, there's someone on the big screen. What's there going we on? Go. Oh, my gosh. Oh, hey, everybody. It's Jeff Oske here from the Annals of the Bob and Tom Library. Um, <laughs> it, it's Annals, Jeff. Oh, An did I Annals? mispronounce that? Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. No problem. Um, while I was doing some research the other day, I came across, and I, doubt, I don't think Tom even remembered writing this, but I came across the self-help book that Tom once wrote. Oh, really? Oh. It's called There's My Way or the Wrong Way. Oh, look at that. The nice. Tom Griswold yeah. story. Hot dog. Um, there's even some blurbs on the back. Oh, Let's yeah. take a look at these real Boy, quick. Look how thick that, that is. A, that's <laughs> quite a book. It's 1,942 chapters. Wow. That's what a what, tome. how much advice Tom has. Well, I, I hadn't finished it yet. Oh, uh, <laughs> here's some of the blurbs. It's good, but not as good as my joke book, says Kiss fan Ace Cosby. Oh. <laughs> uh, media darling Christy Lee says, I want to be there when Tom records the audiobook so I can interrupt him every five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if Tom tells me I like the book, then I like the book, says musician Pat Godwin. <laughs> <laughs> and global sensation Chick McGee says, get the F away from me right now. <laughs> uh, let's take a, uh, you guys want to hear a few excerpts oh, from yeah. uh, Tom? Heck, heck yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Let's, let's, this is my, my self-help book. This is your self-help yeah. okay. book. Let's read a few excerpts. Chapter one. Well, I can't see you, and I've never met you. I can tell without a doubt you could probably use a haircut. <laughs> and not one of those Hitler Youth of Tomorrow haircuts. A good old-fashioned, parted-on-the-side American haircut. There we go. You All look right. like someone who would buy a self-help book. <laughs> Chapter 62. Okay. Mm. Life's problems. No matter how privileged your life is, 
you're bound to encounter problems. Some problems will be easier to resolve than others, but I've found throughout my years, the best way to handle problems is by throwing money at them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have money? You better get some, because you're going to need a lot of it. <laughs> they say, mo money, mo problems. But what they should have said was, mo problems? You need mo money. <laughs> here, here. Very astute. Uh, thank you. I was very proud of that one. Chapter 114, <laughs> Confrontation. <laughs> like you, the reader, I'm no fan of confrontation, mm. so my advice to you is avoid it at all costs. <laughs> there is no room for pride when it comes to avoiding confrontation. <laughs> Put in your Raycon earbuds and pretend you're on with your doctor. <laughs> you can't stoop too low. Tell them you'd love to talk to them soon, but you're running late to a funeral. <laughs> sure, they not might not be happy, but you are. And that's all that really matters. Oh, sound advice. This actually isn't it's good. This is not this is not far off. Chapter 956. The problem is you. <laughs> If you're depressed or have anxiety or are down and lonely, remember the problem is always you. <laughs> you, you are the problem each and every time. Not me. I'm never the problem. You, you are the problem. Until you take ownership of that, you will always have problems because you are you. Oh, I, I haven't read any of this and I want to read more. Yeah. And in conclusion. Oh, the end, I do. I'm a genius and you're all a bunch of incompetent buffoons. <laughs> that means ridiculous but amusing. Now go out and make it a great day. Aww, very nice. Nice. Beautiful. That's my new book. I yeah, think, look forward to its much. publication. Okay, yeah. well, thank you very much. A little bit of uh, a reading from Jeff Oske. A little self-help book yeah, from Tom there we Griswold. Go. There we go. Uh, now, um, what else have you got over there, Christy Lee? Uh, there's a new survey regarding online dating, and it reveals some of the factors people consider when connecting with a potential partner. According to the poll conducted by the app known as Pure Dating, which I'm not familiar with, but I'm not online dating, 70% of respondents are turned off by lack of punctuation and poor grammar. Hmm. I just asked that question. Would you uh, be bothered by that if your date said, well, this is a real nice restaurant. I ain't never done been here. Ah, boy. I, you know, I'm fairly forgiving. As Tom would say, though, what if she, uh, the lady were spectacular looking? Yeah, you know, who, yeah, I mean, who cares make... about an Oxford comma when she can't find a brassiere to hold her huge boobs? Yeah, you make concessions, don't you? <laughs> There's a trade off there. You yes. need to ask her about her periods, what you need to do. Do Forget you about the Oxford your dates? Comma. Uh, only if I'm being never seriously. Always is a joke. Really? Yes, yeah. But I am kind of being a little serious. <laughs> <laughs> you ever bump into somebody who says, right? They say that a lot. I don't care for that a lot. <laughs> not very right? 85% yeah. yeah. of those surveyed had qu said quick replies are a green flag indicating a potential partner's genuine interest. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Green flag means go to. Yeah, it but does. remember, if it's not a quick reply, it doesn't mean they're not into. They could be busy. Exactly. <laughs> not everybody's holding their phone twenty four seven. Everybody chill out. Survey respondents preferred planning a date as early as possible after matching. Seventy five percent said within a week. Forty five percent within two days, and thirty percent within twenty four hours. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Have you done any online dating? No. Okay. Pat. Yeah. So I don't think any of us could uh, be online. Pat Maybe. did. How, would well, you like? How did it go, Pat? Nab him within twenty four hours, or nab him? Yeah. No, uh, I mean every morning I would check the traps. Right. And uh, <laughs> I think I lasted about a week before I had success on uh, it was Tinder actually. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, and I got off quickly. What kind of photograph? <laughs> what, what kind of photograph did you put up? An old uh, one of me in high school. Ah. Uh, Oh, I thought no, it was uh, Jan Michael Vincent you put up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. And, and now when you put this up, were you contacted in, in text form? Yeah. Uh-huh. And was the grammar okay? It was perfect. Yeah, it was great. Okay. Is it the lady that you're now? Is that Yeah, yeah she's oh, very good grammar. Wow, that mm. is a, a, a decent outcome. Yeah. No kidding. Absolutely. So one shot at it and it worked? 
No, there was a, there was an incident. <laughs> there there was, were misfirings. You went on a couple other dates. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember I when had, you were dating. I had a horrible date. You know? Oh, oh, I remember that one. I can't really mention it, but she asked. The so, one that had so that was no, was no no sex, right? No, she had said oh. uh, on my website there was a picture of me at the Eiffel Tower where I appeared to be 30. <laughs> and I said, I was. It's my website. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of photos from my career. Mm -hmm. And she said that was being disingenuous because I didn't look like that now. <laughs> oh, at least she used a big word. So I paid for the bill and I told her I had to leave to go to my other job ringing the bell at Notre Dame Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> Do I offend you? <laughs> Thank the wary. Thank yeah, that the was a little embarrassing. Aw. Um, so Horrible date. Again, the thrust of this uh, article is that um, it's important to... Uh, Have good grammar. Yeah. But what is it? What percentage of people are affected by that? What percentage of people? 70% okay. are turned off. Hmm. All right. Um, now, we have... Uh, Coming up, we're going to talk with Kostaki Economopoulos, our NFL correspondent, comedian Kostaki Economopoulos, in just a few minutes. But right now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, about uh, feeling, feeling safe and secure in 2024. Our friends at Simply Safe, uh, Chick McGee's the one who brought this to our attention years ago. That's right. We've wrapped up 2023, and as we look ahead to 2024, what do you need? Peace of mind? That never changes. That's why. Simply Safe is out there. A comprehensive protection for the whole home with advanced sensors that detect break ins, fires, floods, and more. Powered by 24 7 professional monitoring, costing less than a dollar a day, half the price of traditional home security. Simply Safe prioritizes your privacy with indoor security cameras. They're the only ones on the market with physical privacy shutters to ensure your privacy 24 7. And satisfaction is guaranteed with Simply Safe. Try it for 60 days risk-free. If you don't love it, return your system for a full refund. It's just that easy. Keep your home and family safer than ever in the new year and grab some peace of mind. As a Bob and Tom Show listener, you can save 20% on your new system with a fast protect plan by visiting simplysafetom.com. Customize your system in just minutes. Simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you very much, Simply Safe. Coming up, our NFL report with comedian Kostaki Economopoulos. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Tom 24 7. Hope you were able to catch yesterday's Bob and Tom Show on a Monday. Greg Warren came by with another edition of the Warren Report, filling us in on all of the details of the creator and the uh, story of the trampoline. That's right, the Warren Report covering trampolines on Monday and then of course Reno Collier was here with his country fried take about social media. Hope you caught that as well. Great show on Monday. Great show today as well. We've got Chick McGee back at the sports desk after sitting out a couple of days last week. He's well recovered and looking great doing I sports. Love I love that guy too. Chick McGee at the sports desk. You never know what you're going to hear on Bob and Tom Radio. Good morning, I'm Mark Allison with your Bob and Tom News headlines. Donald Trump scored a record-setting win in the Iowa caucuses with his rivals languishing far behind. Trump's victory sends a resounding message. The GOP's 2024 presidential nomination is to lose. He's on track to smash the record for a contested Iowa Republican caucus with a margin of victory exceeding the nearly 13 percentage points Bob Dole won by back in 1988. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finished second over former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. Caucus voters endured life-threatening, cold, and dangerous driving conditions to meet in hundreds of schools, churches, and community centers across the state. Next up, New Hampshire. Iran says it fired missiles at what it claimed were Israeli spy headquarters near the U.S. consulate in the northern Iraq city of Erbil and at targets linked to the extremist group Islamic State in northern Syria. Four civilians killed, six injured late Monday after missiles hit an upscale area near the consulate in Erbil, the seat of Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdish region. The strikes come at a time of heightened tensions in the region and fears of a wider spillover of the ongoing war in Gaza. The U.S. State Department condemned the strikes as reckless. Dangerous wind chills continuing to affect much of the Rockies, Great Plains, and Midwest.
with wind chills minus 30 degrees being recorded Tuesday in many parts of the central U.S. About 110,000 U.S. homes and businesses without power late Monday, the bulk of them in Oregon after more widespread outages that started Saturday. Classes canceled Tuesday for students in Portland. Other major cities, including Chicago, Denver, Dallas, and Fort Worth, also feeling the cold. And that's a look at your news headlines. More of the Bob and Tom Show coming up. Hey, hi, this is Tom. And this is Chick from the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, Christy, what's the best way to get full access to the show? Hey, what? you introduced me. Uh, that would be to become a Bob and Tom VIP. Very good. Now, Josh, what's a feature of Bob and Tom VIP? Wait a minute. Well, the live five-camera video stream of the show, plus a podcast of the show, and comedy from the Bob and Tom archives. Excellent. Chick, what do you have to say for yourself? Become a Bob and Tom VIP now. Just go to bobandtom.com slash VIP. See, that was worth the wait, wasn't it? Hey, this is Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. The space shuttle astronauts are halfway through their seven-day research mission. Endeavor is expected to become an orbiting maternity ward today when frog eggs that were fertilized earlier in the mission start to hatch. Now We are scheduled to hook up with uh, Commander Thompson. We should hook up right now, I All believe. Right. Hello, Houston. You're speaking with Bob and Tom. Hello, Endeavor. Hello. This is Captain Thompson. <laughs> hey, Captain, how Captain, are you? Captain, how are you? We're doing great. We uh, do a lot of experiments up here. Yeah, we are just reading about the one involving the uh, frog. The South African clawed frogs. The eggs are about to hatch any moment oh, now, aren't very they? very excited. Very, as a matter of fact, I, it looks like they might be hatching about now. Oh, good. You people might be the first ones on Earth to hear what's going on. Well, but, uh, great. This oh, is there a, they come. This is exciting. Some, some little critter coming out of there. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, Bob and Tom, 24-7. Comedy via your computer. Bob and Tom, 24-7. This is Bob and Tom, 24-7. When I was... Young girl in my 20s, and I'd see a young, beautiful girl be, oh, you know, I got to get that. And, and now it's, oh, I'll never get that. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, young yeah. girls are filled with sugar and spice and everything nice, and I'm filled with anger and semen and shame. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not think about sex? Everything on TV, sex, you know, all the commercials, very beautiful women in all the commercials now. doesn't even matter what the product is. It's just very sexual. Mm -hmm. Beer, pizza, sex, sex, gum, shampoo, sex, burritos, tires, sex. <laughs> and then you finally have sex, and it's, it's kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. Where's my Sprite, my new car? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not stupid. I know there's more to life than just sex. It's just none of those other things feel as good as sex. I mean, I love cookies. Mm -hmm. I love cookies. Oh, yeah. But if I do not have access to cookies... I will not rent a movie and watch two other people eat cookies. <laughs> Perfect stranger uh -huh. eating cookies. No. My most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmunds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. Ah, uh, yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Rodney Carrington, and you are listening. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. It's a show. It's a presentation. Hello, Tom. Uh, hello. We are joined by comedian Kostaki Economopoulos. There he is. Um, he looks like he's doing a post-game press conference. Yes, he it's does. pretty cool looking, yeah. Um, <laughs> Kostaki. Uh, I have a question for Kostaki. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, This yeah. is uh, the question that everyone's asking me uh, via email. Kostaki, what are you going to do? It happened yesterday, but uh, <laughs> what are you going to do when Bill Belichick is the head coach of the Falcons? We know how you hate him. Uh, go ahead. I, 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 will, I will wince, and then I will root for Bill Belichick. I Is think. that okay. right? Wow. Okay. I'm not happy about it, but if it, it will be an improvement over what's happening, so I have to, you know. You what know, you, what's they, your answer uh, to this, Chick? He uh, he was interviewed, B Belichick and uh, Arthur Blank. His last name yeah. is so horrible that we still don't know what it is, and you can't say <laughs> it on broadcast <laughs> medium, of course, or in, in private circles. But they on his giant 180-foot yacht. 
Kostaki? Uh, no, it was a what? A Is that what super happened? Yacht, I, I remember? saw that it was in person. It was on the blank yacht. The oh. blank and yacht. A super oh. yacht. Where was the I'll yacht? Take the yacht. yacht I, don't, I don't know where it was. It looked like the south of France or something. Is Whoa. what it looked like. Nice. Was it a Nice? <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's very uh, beautiful <laughs> with 180 feet, <laughs> but I don't. Oh, no. I That's uh, <laughs> not real warm there right now, though. I'm. I, I don't know if it is or not. I'm not up to my weather. I know you go there willy nilly. No, to I just cats. I, uh, but <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out where. Oh it no, was. it's fine. Kostaki. Uh, no, uh, Kostaki is our NFL correspondent, and I should point this out. You'll be in Jackson, Michigan, Portage, Michigan, and Gaylord, Michigan, all coming up this month. I'll give you those Next details. Week, actually, yeah, it's uh, soon. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll give you some details on those shows, and then Hastings, Nebraska, coming up on uh, the 10th of February. But right now. What is your take on uh, the playoffs? Right now, Chick and I are going to, going to enjoy 10 Cowboys jokes in a row. Oh, oh wow. Hot dog. It's fun, right? Oh, oh yeah. It's fun when the Cowboys lose. The Dallas game was so embarrassing, the village people have asked the Cowboy to leave. <laughs> oh, oh. That, is, that is rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it's the second worst day in Dallas history. Hashtag oh. JFK. <laughs> Whoa, in case we didn't get it. Hashtag JFK. <laughs> Texas border is more secure than the Cowboys end zone. It's, uh, it was, it's tough. Oh, it's, it's all tough. right. The Cowboys got bounced out of the playoffs faster than a book from a Texas library. See, that's fast. That could be really. It, it turned, <laughs> this game really aged Jerry Jones. He was only 46 years old at kickoff. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, oh, he did not look good. The Packers receivers were wide open. You'd expect better coverage in a stadium sponsored by AT&T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, The only hot spot in the building was the coach's chair. Ah. <laughs> he was in the hot seat all night. <laughs> to be fair, there's a certain Atlanta team that plays in Mercedes-Benz Stadium that can't seem to put together a drive. Just, just to be fair. All right. <laughs> Uh, the Dallas defense looked less like pro bowlers and more like the defense that they play in the pro bowl. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Coach McCarthy, was that a game plan or a resignation letter? What, what happened there? What? A Cowboys upset. In the old days, to upset a bunch of Cowboys, you just needed two guys to hold hands. <laughs> oh, boy, they got to get real mad about that. Oh, what do we have here? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, they broke back. <laughs> Texans killed the Browns. Didn't look like the Browns watched any film on the Texans. Was it only available on Peacock? It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> astute. <laughs> it's been nine years between Joe Flacco's last two playoff appearances, and Saturday it seemed that long between Browns' touchdowns. Uh, maybe the problem was the game started at 4.30, which is now Joe Flacco's dinner time. <laughs> oh, early bird. <laughs> Chiefs beat the Dolphins. Dolphins have now lost 11 straight games and the temperature is 40 or below. It was so cold this game. The Dolphins signed Colin Kaepernick just to get some heat. <laughs> <laughs> what did they barbecue in Kansas City this weekend? Frozen Dolphin. <laughs> Frozen Dolphin sounds like slang for an erection. <laughs> Jake Browning's girlfriend really freezes my dolphin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they kept saying it's one of the coldest games in NFL history. It wasn't even the coldest game this year. The Dolphins beat the Broncos 70 to 20. That was very cold. That was <laughs> ice cold. That was, at, up 24 points with a minute left against the Falcons. Jameis Winston faked a kneel down and handed off for a touchdown. That's cold. That is super cold. <laughs> The Bills asked folks to come do some shoveling in the stadium. Coach Mike McCarthy would help, but he was busy digging his own professional grave. <laughs> <laughs> they postponed the game a day because they prioritize public safety, right, in Buffalo. Uh -huh. And yet every week in the parking lot is just a sea of drunks jumping off vans onto flaming folding tables. <laughs> the public safety's priority. <laughs> You think it was cold in Kansas City and Buffalo? Check out Detroit. Hell froze over. The Lions won a playoff game. <laughs> First time in 32 years. They doubled their playoff wins since 1957. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so Congrats, cool. Lions. Oh, I loved it. I loved that. 
Uh, these playoff games in the domes turn out to be better. Does anyone in Buffalo know that you can build a thing with a roof? You know, <laughs> Tom's a big proponent uh, yeah, of that. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe one that rolls away, <laughs> put it on wheels. Yes. Uh, they can do that. Uh, any you, of that. Walls. You could put walls on it even. Sure. <laughs> I didn't recognize Julio Jones last night because he was healthy enough to play. Um, <laughs> and because he wasn't wearing number 11. He, By the way, he was knocked out of the game. Does he wear 80 because that's the over-under in seconds of playing time? <laughs> <laughs> Injury pro. He should wear 86. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he's out. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He's 80. Oh, that's a better joke. All right. I got to call you next time. Oh, no. no. Uh, Please don't. The, the Eagles tackling was terrible. <laughs> I've seen better tackling at a Black Friday sale. It was, it was bad. <laughs> better tackling at a furry convention. More fun. Mascots. Are oh, more fun. oh, yes. <laughs> the Eagles couldn't bring anybody down. They were like the opposite of Adele. <laughs> the opposite, you know, oh, your songs, your songs are sad. Coming up this weekend, we got uh, Patrick Mahomes' first ever road playoff game. He must have been thinking, well, at least we can go somewhere warmer than here. Oh, Buffalo? <laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift took the Chiefs. Eminem took the Lions. I am very much enjoying this season of The Voice. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's maybe close on this one. California could ban tackle football for kids under 12. A policy already adopted by the Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> no tackling. <laughs> no, not so good with the tackling. Uh, Kostaki Economopolis, all pro lines is where you can uh, share your thoughts on uh, Kostaki's jokes or add your own. Excellent. Um, mm -hmm. You'll find that on various social media platforms, all pro lines. Once again, uh, Thursday the 25th, Jackson, Michigan. And then uh, Friday the 26th, Portage, Michigan, Saturday, Gaylord, Michigan, at the Landing Zone coming up Saturday, January 27th. And in February on the 10th, it's Hastings, Nebraska at Hastings Auditorium. Those will be some cool shows, Kostaki. I know you'll do very well. And we'll look Thanks, forward to sir. talking to you next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Do you want to do any picks? Did you, uh, we should uh, point out the chick got them both yesterday. I'm still on that heater, Kostaki. Oh, oh, man. You did. Yep. Yeah, you picked Buccaneers. Good for you. Uh, 91 and 79 on the season against the spread. Uh, three Terrific. and three weeks. Really good. Yep. What, uh, do you, what do you got this week? Any upsets on um, this one coming up? I don't. Uh, I think uh, I don't want to say. Uh, Buff I like Buffalo all the way through. Uh, I okay. think they're going to be. Uh, I think they're going to end up in the uh, in the old. What do they call that last game? The Super Bowl. So that's it. That's yeah. it. The old, champion, the old uh, championship man. game. And I like the Lions. And the winners hour. Boy, that Packer 49er game is going to be really something. Uh, yeah. The way Jordan I mean, Love the, is the playing. lineups this week, coming weekend. They're all. They're, yeah. It's going to be four yeah. great games, at least on paper. I think I'm the line. I think the Lions are going to be in the NFC Championship game, though. So. Oh. Oh, really? So and, All right. and if Green Bay wins, beats San Francisco, the NFC Championship game will be in Detroit between the Lions oh, and the oh, Packers. That's oh. crazy. How's that taste, huh? Yeah. Lions, wow. Lions, Bills, Super Bowl still possible? All right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, thanks, Kostaki. Thanks, thanks, man. Guys. Bye. See you, buddy. Right. Good talking to you as always. We're going to switch gears right now. The lady with the scarf over there yeah. is Christy Lee. Oh. She's at the bottom. Oh, the lady with the scarf Ooh. is Dad's head with me. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in, Pat. The yeah. lady with the scarf. Ass to ass. Ass to ass. <laughs> is that what they say? Oh, I don't think they say that. Chris, Christopher. <laughs> lady Ass in red. Lady in red, yeah. Yeah, cheek, great song. Cheek, cheek, cheek. Yeah, so Christopher Burke did the soundtrack for Requiem for a dream. <laughs> Ask to Ask. Ask to, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what they chant, Tom, during a scene. You'd like that scene. Yeah, yeah, you really would. <laughs> oh, this isn't a mainstream movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. You'd freak out. Well, okay. something that Tom's been teasing all morning that's pretty awful. Christy Lee shawl wearer. Yes. Go ahead. Some experts are saying... Is it urethral sounding oh, or penis probing is an emerging sexual trend? No, it's not. Among men that could have serious health implications. Yes, I'm with you. I don't think this is an emerging trend. I, I don't I think can't. So I mean, boy. I think it's emerged as much as it's going to emerge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. According yeah. to the Daily stop Mail. Stop it now. <laughs> God. This involves inserting a small metal or a silicon rod into <sighs> the urethral opening at the tip of the penis. I'm not in favor of putting anyone in jail for just no reason. 
other than this. <laughs> They're not hurting anybody yeah. but themselves. Stick something in your penis, you go to jail. The practice appears to be gaining <laughs> traction on social media, Chick, and was even featured on an episode of Netflix reality TV series, The Ultimatum, Marry or Move On. Is that even, what, what is that? I don't know why it would be on TV, but... How a doctor's warn rods could introduce bacteria into the urethra that could cause urinary tract infections, At least. which in, ter- in turn can lead to permanent erectile and urinary problems. I can get you nine silicone rods. <laughs> they yeah. call they refer to them. <laughs> all right. They're called stir sticks, but if you look at them, they are clearly penile insertion devices. Uh. <laughs> Multicolored. Uh, uh, nine bucks. Nine bucks. Should we try this on the air? <laughs> you know, I, ah, you know is, what? Why not? This is supposedly a trend. I would like to announce my future celibacy. <laughs> I am not participating. You're not in participating this. in that trend. No, it can't be pleasurable. No, there's no way. Well, it has to be for somebody, or for it wouldn't who? be happening. Now, I remember this, and I found this story that we had a while back. A 42 year old patient referred to as Mr. N. D sought treatment at a hospital uh, where uh, he and his friend were, quote, blind drunk when his friend inserted a chopstick into his male member, quote, for fun. Uh, for fun. Just for fun. Um, the physicians had to remove a four inch long chopstick. Uh, yikes. <laughs> um, and this took place. Uh, yeah. Four inch long? Must have been two inches, must have been hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it, fortunately, it was a chopstick. I mean, it could have been a fork. Oh. <laughs> Did you go tines first? Yeah, yeah, that's the question. Oh, yeah, the, oh. oh man. Oh, wow. A wooden chopstick? Um, or was it a metal one? One of those nice metal ones. Let's see what it says here. Um, yeah, you know what's It doesn't make it clear. It must have been wooden, though. Oh. Why would you say that? They have those nice metal ones. Because it says a four-inch long chopstick, so it must have been broken off. Oh. Wow. Um, and I heard that the guy uh, put it back in 30 minutes later. It was, <laughs> he was, uh, yeah, you, yes, you see the, the old Chinese yeah. food jokes. You get horny yeah. an hour later. And yeah. don't yeah. That's, <laughs> anytime you do the Chinese thing. Yeah. Where did that start, by the way? I don't know. Was that actually a thing? Yeah. Was it's it all actual, the MSG or something? It's a fact. There's something that happens where you're not, you're hungry again. Really? No, I, I am not. I, I don't know. No, I get very full when I eat a lot of Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> and well. then you're hungry an hour later and you want more food. I just sent you guys, that, and they actually, uh, an ad for urethral dilators. Um, so they're not even messing around here. They're not even saying they're stir sticks. They're saying, this isn't like a catheter to be used by a proper physician. No, this medical is for, professional. This is for kicks. Urethral sound beads. Sound uh, beads. Urethral, urethra masturbation rod sex toy for men. How and you should see these. They back? are. They look like drill bits. How much does that set you back? Sixteen ninety nine for, for a set of six. You know, is this correct? This says it's called corn dogging. <laughs> is that That's corn. what it is now. That, yes. Corn I mean, the slang dogging. must be corn is that, dogging. Is that really what it's called? I've never oh, heard of it. That, that makes, would make sense. Yeah. That's funny. Yes. I am going to use corn dogging from now on. I tell you that. Ugh. Okay. Well, uh, thank Boy. you very much. Uh, what else is going on over at the news desk, Christy Lee? A Detroit man is in custody after he allegedly asked Spirit Airlines flight attendant to join the Mile High Club. Well, uh, look, the worst that's going to happen is they can say no. You know what uh, I mean? No, you... the worst that can happen is you get arrested. Well, that's ridiculous. According to a complaint, Mr. <laughs> James Finister was intoxicated on you a know, flight. You uh, know, like Sinister. Yeah, uh, from Louisville to Orlando and proposition, the lead flight attendant. You know, there was a time when women could take a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> While asking a second flight attendant the same question. How about you? Pulled, this... <laughs> he pulled her onto his seat. Hey, what? baby. Wait yeah, a he minute. pulled her onto his seat. No, oh, what a creepazoid. The man's accused of other disruptive behavior, <laughs> hey, including on. lying on the floor in front of his seat. Come on over here and sit on this. Upon arriving in Orlando, he was arrested for interfering with the flight crew. Apparently, he also asked questions about the cockpit and how to enter it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> really? Not good. That's ridiculous. Get out the zip ties. Mm-hmm. This wow. guy's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. Yes, a very uh, big idiot. Um, yeah, this says he had done a bunch of shots before getting on the plane. Nah, it's oh, always a good boy. idea. 
Okay, Ooh. yeah, it says he admitted to Orlando police he'd been doing shots prior to the flight to, quote, calm himself down. Yeah, I did shots. What are you going <laughs> to do? I'm a nervous flyer. You want to bang me? At least he didn't open the door. <laughs> True. He did you not open the door. bang me. I mean, that's what essentially what this guy did. You want to get united? Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, um, right now I want to talk about cheese. <laughs> And how delicious mm. cheese is. In fact, we were having some cheese on the show yesterday. Gardner's Wisconsin cheese. They had some aged sharp cheese. That, unbelievable. Yes. What it's we had so yesterday good. was the eight-year-old sharp cheddar, which is my personal favorite. Man, oh, man. They're aged from four to 17 years, those cheddars that Gardner's Wisconsin cheese has. And I've, I've got to try every year. Yeah. I have to. Oh, yeah. Artisan meats, quality cheese, the freshest curds you've ever tasted. Well, you, that's right. I'm talking gardeners. And I mean fresh when I'm talking about those curds, by the way. The famous squeaky curds. They come in white cheddar and garlic dill flavor. And they're made fresh in the morning and most often delivered to your doorstep in only about 48 hours. And that's nationwide. Gardeners Wisconsin Cheese, they also have that amazing Oven baked cheese. Chick, were you here when I was talking about making the savory s'mores? No. Oh. Oh. You take two uh, crackers. Hang on, talk slow. I got a pen. And Go you ahead. melt that oven baked cheese. You can grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Right. And then you put a slice of summer sausage on there. So you got the three ingredients oh. like a regular s'more, but this is My a savory goodness. s'more. Yes. Mm. Check out their new oven baked cheese flavor. Ace, I know you're going to be a fan of this jalapeno. Mm. Ooey gooey spicy cheese. It's wonderful. It melts so great. And it's got a bit of a kick. Perfect for football playoff season. Try Jalapeno. It's now available in their oven-baked bundle package, which we also gave to some lucky winners uh, this football season. That's right. Uh, we gave them the uh, delightful oven-baked bundle. That's right. And we're going to be hearing, by the way, from uh, Spencer Suharski and Jeremy Childers, our uh, winners during the holiday break of our pigskin competition. They're going to get to pick against Chick McGee coming up later this week. Sure, and they got that bundle. They can eat the meat sticks with them. Those are a perfect snack, snack for folks on the go. And also, their summer sausage is just great. I had a garlic summer sausage over the winter break. Well, when I say over the winter break, it was, let's be honest, one afternoon. Check out all <laughs> the flavors at GardenersWisconsinCheese.com. Try them out. You'll see the difference. Cheese is always a great idea, especially during those football viewing parties or tailgating. Right now, receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more. Give them a shot. I think you're really going to like them. GardenersWisconsinCheese.com. And coming up, there's a place in France where the ladies mm -hmm. doff their pants. We'll find out about that. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us? Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This woman is listening to the Bob and Tom Morning Show on Q95. That's disgusting. Why, nothing, nothing could be worse than that. Well, I stand corrected. The Bob and Tom Morning Show on Q95. Get up and get it on. <laughs> I'm actually in love right now. My boyfriend and I are walking around town in a two-headed Snuggie. <laughs> um, it's getting pretty intense. Oh, that's yeah, nice. it's yeah. pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad, you know, because I, I have a hard time listening to the, the love song, you know, love songs with Delilah. Where are you calling from tonight? Uh, Where are you? What's going on with you tonight? What's your name? <laughs> Requests and dedications. <laughs> Hi, Amy, calling in from Tustin, Arizona. What's going on with you tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you and Matt broke up. That's hard. What do you want to say to Matt tonight? <laughs> <laughs> we'll play that for you. That's Penny Lover by Lionel Richie. <laughs> Penny Lover. Oh. oh, you know what? I've had enough. That's, I, that's it. I'm, I'm in love with I remember that very well. Maria, that is... Uh, for, those that, <laughs> for those that get that... Yes. Oh, 
<laughs> and for those that don't, you should listen to the Lila just so you do. Just that yeah. one just time. So you get oh, the joke. Intense. They should have those songs. Aren't good. They're not good for people's mental health. Like, they should have little footnotes at the end of every verse, you know, I would cross an ocean for you if that ocean led to an English-speaking country. Because at this point in my life, it'd be really difficult to learn a second language fluently, not to mention the anti-American mm. sentiment. We'd have to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> No. Wow, you are quite the literalist, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Baby, I would die for you if I were already dying and you just needed my giblets. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Bamford is our guest. She's not kidding. She was- Hello there. It's Ed from Ed Septic and Sewage. I'm here at this poor SOB's house. He got quoted $20,000 for a new system. I'm doing that same system for him, $500. I know what you're thinking. Ed, how can you do it so cheap? Well, first of all, this machine, stolen. That saves me a ton of money. Secondly, I'm not licensed or bonded. That saves me tens of thousands of dollars a year. So if you need a cheap septic, call me, Ed, Ed Septic. But they get hectic, call Ed Septic at the number below. From Ed Septic. Today, a little bit of a uh, <laughs> little bit of an issue, something a little minor. Uh, Christy has a new boyfriend. She's uh, officially announced um, the uh, arrival of her new boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, you just, just got here. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, she Russia. ordered him online. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean you've, you've been seeing this guy, and now suddenly it's uh, okay. We're oh, we can go with it. Yeah, we're going, we're going with it. It's official. And the reason we had to go out and go with it is because this guy's name is Tom. Mm-hmm. My name. Mm-hmm. And there was some confusion my. behind the scenes. Christy, my, be I'm the only one named. I'm the original Tom. Well, no, but Christy was you know telling stories. She'd go well, this weekend. Tom and I did something, and she would you know, and have to tell about some exotic adventure. Clarify. Had, and I'd have to because, clarify that I. Mm-hmm. Did I, I had no part of this. There and, has been some speculation on the show that Tom and I might be seeing each other. This mm-hmm. Tom, but it's not. It's mm-hmm. totally not true. Mm-hmm. So you have boyfriend Tom, and yes. then I will be plaintiff Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I think. How about boss Tom? Uh-huh. Uh, ooh, I like Taking it off here, boss Tom. Uh-huh. <laughs> but see, mm-hmm. since he's your man, he should be major Tom, mm-hmm. and I would be minor Tom. Oh, that's nice. That way, you know, since he's like the guy, mm-hmm. your major, mm-hmm. your major dude. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to settle on something. I kind of like work Tom versus play Tom. Or mm-hmm. day Tom versus night, night Tom. Tom. But mm-hmm. then sometimes you see him during the day. Like mm-hmm. on a Saturday, you probably I'll let him in, I assume, during the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, he stays chained to the tree, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> He's not allowed in. Sometimes no. we have lunch, you know. I think there's a Starbucks in town that thinks that we're having an affair. It's great. Really? Yeah, it's great. Because you know how you we meet at the same Starbucks occasionally. And, oh, I see. You know, the people that work there kind of give you that look like, oh, mm-hmm. Well, that's because when, that's because, see, he's facing them and you're, uh-huh. when you look away, he makes funny faces with his lips. That's probably true. Hey, look. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, okay. oh, yeah. That's yeah, the sure standard. That's really, yeah. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your tongue in your mouth. <laughs> Sorry. That's a really that creepy was, that was like a it. lizard what was that? I missed snake. It. Well, no, so, you don't want to see, see it. See, let's just, let's just say, let's just say Chick oh. is the employee at Starbucks. Yes, <laughs> and then and then I am facing them uh, right. sitting at the table. And, and I'm sitting. You're my sipping. Back to you're them. sipping your some annoying, ex- uh, some please, annoying exotic don't drink. Don't show me your tongue again, please. And as soon and as you look away, you look away, and then, and then he goes uh, <laughs> with his tongue, <laughs> implying. <laughs> Don't touch those. Sorry. <laughs> the human drama of the curvy cleavage on display. <laughs> this is the Bob and Tom Show. No shoes, no shirt, no talent. Comedian <laughs> Bruce Clark is our guest. Some <laughs> of <laughs> oh, that Pictionary. You ever play that game? Pictionary? Sure. Yeah. That's we good. almost got in a fist fight over that, oh, didn't yeah. we, Chick? Yeah, we hey, sure did. And uh, you play with your friends, are always drunk, too. You know, all your buddies are always a little bit <laughs> <laughs> 
play in there. I get this uh, phrase, I draw it, you know, they're like, hey, how about a guy frying his own penis? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, what the hell's the matter here? That's in Pictionary. <laughs> idiot. <laughs> it's Peter Pan, you idiot. <laughs> In front of here, you moron. <laughs> You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. That's awful. Awful entertaining. Essential morning radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom. Dot com. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. How you doing over there, buddy? You all right? Talking to me? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank all you. All right. Looks like you got caught something in your eye there. Uh, uh, I'm all right. Uh, we have um, Christy Lee at the news desk. We'll talk with Christy in just a second. Okay. But right now, uh, following our chat with Kostaki Economopoulos, it's always uh, good to have a nice uh, uh, palate cleanser, oh, if you will. Oh, really? uh, yeah, really? I think so. Yeah, we gotta huh? go. Uh, Rules that yeah. Yeah. with a deep voice. Ace Cosby. Joke of the day. The little known fact, before he was a big movie star, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he served spaghetti in a local coffee shop. Really? He did? really? Yeah, he was known as the pasta barista, baby. <laughs> that Whoa. was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. Pasta barista, baby. Oh, boy. <laughs> I like Ace, that term. that no. no. Yes, yes. No. Uh, no. Uh, somewhat forced, but I uh, think uh, <laughs> Somewhat forced. <laughs> I, I could not have uh, seen that coming. Uh, thank you very much, Ace Cosby. Uh, now, uh, we turn back to the lady wrapped up in the uh, big scarf over there. It's Christy Lee freezing. Uh, lady Farmer making some serious extra I cash. I thought you were going to say Lady Farter. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. Why would you think that? I don't know. A Lady well, Farter, I guess. She's I making some extra something. cash on OnlyFans, posting videos of herself milking cows, driving tractors, cleaning out dirty barns. Huh. All while wearing a bikini. Oh, oh you know what happens oh, when she boy. milks the cow. I've got it all over my breasts. Miss <laughs> 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 so? Brittany Woods, 29, says she now earns triple what she did while working as a full-time, fully clothed farmer. Uh, old McDonald had a Woody B-O-N-E-R, and I'm just... <laughs> I had a boner B-O-N-E-R, with a bone bone hair and a bone bone there. The New hair Zealander bone. says she can now work hours to suit herself. She says, I get a lot of hate. I got a lot of hate from women as they said that I wouldn't wear what I wear working on a farm, but all that attention helped everything push further. So is this one of those things now, Josh, various uh, uh, um, sort of commonly thing, common things are now being done on OnlyFans? To yeah. Yeah, apparently. I was reading an article about OnlyFans, and uh, I guess there's a beekeeper, um, a farmer now. A this naked first- beekeeper? Well, no, wearing a bikini or something. She's wearing like the 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 full thing and and talking about beekeeping, but then she um, will get naked inside. Like she'll like she, she has clips of both. Oh, and uh, well, who? I mean, what else were they? Does she leave the headgear on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She. I mean, she was properly bee. Like she really knows her beekeeping huh. and did it correctly. So you would watch a little bit about beekeeping. I haven't seen it, but and then you can go and watch her get naked. <laughs> so it's like the old Playboy magazine. You know, they'd have uh, an, an article by whatever. <laughs> we have a Jean Paul Sartre, and right, then, right, and then <laughs> right, and then Cynthia Beavage. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty. Centerfold. I mean, how much could a beekeeper make? So this obviously helps pad her income. And, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I saw a beekeeping video the other day. The lady was beautiful, and she was not wearing. The beekeeping suit. Oh, no she was kidding. just in normal clothes and yeah. took this huge hive and the Important queen work. out just with her hands and was scooping the bees up. It was amazing. Yeah. Is oh. that the one where she gets stung? No, she did not her, get stung. Because her stance wasn't wide enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's that go? Between the first and second. Yeah. All oh, the golf course. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That was the good thing about OnlyFans is that women shouldn't give other women, a, like, you shouldn't give a lady a hard time for being on there. She's controlling her own content. Nobody else is telling her. That's exactly her. right. I so. disagree. Filth. Filth. <laughs> well, that's fun, but I mean. Filth. But she's making money. Yeah. Yeah. She's it's, she's, it's really empowering. Isn't this your thing, Tom? The the farmers, the the bib overalls, the no shirt, the uh, that whole that whole scene. Don't you like that? Mm-hmm. It's a great um, look. It's yeah. a great look. Yeah, yeah. So, a little yeah, side, the, side yeah, bib yeah, overall. Yeah, the bib overalls is always yeah, a good. Look. Yeah, yeah. Always Speaking good of look. pretty women, Miss Colorado, Madison Marsh, was crowned Miss America during the Sunday night ceremony in Orlando. 
Miss Marsh is a 2023 alum of the Air Force Academy. Is this still going on? She's a pilot with a degree in physics and a graduate student at the Harvard Kennedy School and is the first active duty service member to win the crown. She's a, a Top Gun pilot. She's, she's amazing. Gorgeous. She's be- really beautiful. Yeah. Stunning. Spectacular. Yeah, I mean, re- absolutely. Yes. Wow. And they do the thing where they ask the questions. You see that part? No. Oh, yeah. And they, what would you do to make yeah. world peace? And she said, I'd bomb the bejesus out of North Korea. I really like her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did she honestly say that? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kind of blocked that for a second, too. No, she but did not be, say that. But she'd be capable of it. She's a badass pilot. Yeah. Good yeah, for her. Here in front of her big. What do you think? Beauty pageants are out though, aren't they? Uh, kind of, but I mean, this is for that now. But this oh, is kind I of like no you know, she's uh, obviously a very bright, interesting person. Yes. There's a lot of stuff. Good for her, and, and it helps. They she's get a lot gorgeous, of scholarship right? money. Married to a mustachioed gent. Yeah, she's just not a mustache, married. Huh? She can't be married. She's Miss America. Oh, I think yeah, she can't. Mrs. Mrs. America. That's Mrs. America. That would be. I, I think mean, it says here's her husband, but maybe they change the rules. Back. Back. Is that really a rule? Well, Miss Colorado, guess. yeah, you can Miss, be married. Uh, you know what? Then maybe America. she's. Can Hello, you be divorced? second place. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, this is the internet. It could. It says her husband. It could be way wrong. Well, so. that's true. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that was a rule that Miss America had to be a, a true Miss. Well, that's why they have a Mrs. America and they a Miss do? America. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, well, Josh. Wait to... a minute. They have a Mrs. America. Yeah, yeah they okay. do. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. But why? But you guys are at... now, Josh. Are you old enough to remember the famous theme song? Here she comes, Miss America. There she, yeah. is. There she is. Oh, there she is. So kind of. <laughs> Miss America. Who was it, Wink Martindale? No. Or no, no. Burt Parks. Burt Parks. Burt Parks. <laughs> There's a great episode of WKRP in Cincinnati oh, in which uh, Burt Parks uh, plays the father. Laugh free. He's in the freshman. He is right? in the freshman, yeah. yeah. He, oh, he's, he's great like in that. The entertainment yeah, 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 at the yeah, underground supper club. club. I can't disagree stronger. What? To compete for Miss America, you cannot be married, but you can be divorced. Okay, so maybe she's divorced, which is sad. I think there should be more guidelines. You, really? You, you can't. Well, they're already right. You can't be married. You, right. You can be divorced. I don't think you, can, you should be divorced. I proof agree. She's, proof she's a quitter. Yeah. yeah well, maybe. <laughs> maybe. No, no divorce. A oh, loser. You, you can't oh, be. Come on. You can't be ugly. <laughs> you can't be ugly. Yeah. yeah don't be no. Be. No uggos right at the bottom. <laughs> How is this still continuing? Can you be a fatty, fat, 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 fat? No, God, fatty, no. Fat, 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 fat. Is there anything more ugly than fat? <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Gosh. Hmm. What Here's a story for on? you, Chick. Oh, yeah? In addition to <laughs> cocktail making machines and AI enabled pet doors, uh-huh. this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas also. Saw some new television innovations. You need to look this up, Josh. If you All right. Seen it. LG and Samsung both debuted transparent TVs at the annual technology event. Right. LG's 77 inch transparent OLED screen. How can you see what's on? Can switch between a more traditional black <laughs> background for regular TV mode, Josh, Boop. to a nearly invisible transparent mode when turned off. Boop. Ah, the dog ran into the TV again. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? And I think the frame stays. I think it looks like a frame when it's off. I saw some guys looting these. They were just walking out. <laughs> they were they were carrying invisible pictures. Samsung's what? transparent micro LED powered TV worked in a very similar similar way. Nope, similar. similar. That's interesting. So what's, uh, who wants this? Yeah, well, right, exactly. some people consider a, those, um, a large TV in a room to be kind of gauche. Yeah, and, uh, yeah but you still see the frame. And those uh, those TVs that have frames that have uh, that turn uh, into screensavers that have a high picture, high yeah. high art, or Look whatever like you art. call it, masterpieces. Mm-hmm. So no. you, you could uh, re- replace your windows with these, chick. No, it doesn't make it. It's not a, a portable hole, Tom. <laughs> it's it's uh, trans. You can see right through it to the. So I'm saying so that could be one of your windows. I have windows in my house. I know, but wouldn't that be cool? Now, now all your windows are TV TVs? window. How c- you'd love that. <laughs> would you love? He's telling you you'd love to that. speed you things that. along. I'm going to say yes. I would love that. <laughs> Do you as long as it didn't get in the way of my drinking. Yeah, I <laughs> would love it. You're right. Do you have a TV in the bathroom? I don't have a TV in the bathroom. You can hear it from the uh, bathroom. That still hasn't really taken off. Nope. TV's in the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah, Tom every used now to and have then, one. Every now and then you'll check into those uh, old luxurious hotels and right. uh, have yeah. the TV in the mirror. Yeah. Those yeah. are in the bathroom. Those are never uh, worked. Not really long lasting. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you have a TV in your bathroom at the other house? Uh-huh. Yeah. Not, not this house, though? 
Um, there is a little tiny one, yeah, but I don't have. I have never turned it on. You know, don't have privileges. No, it's I. It's I. I wake up at three in the morning. I'm not going to be blasting a television set. Wake everybody up. Hmm. Got to be very no, quiet. No, I got to. I got to be very quiet. You bring home the paycheck. You can do. You can be as loud as you want. Yeah. The man of the Did house you see the there. look on his face? It was terrifying. I've got to be very quiet. Well, it's uh, not. Uh, yeah. It's not just the people. It's the dogs. <laughs> You wake the dogs up, they're going to want to go out. I never want to live that way. Me Fearful no. in my own home. God, I have no. two dogs. They're lovely. <laughs> they don't run the house. No, mine don't I either. barely do. They could do a better job, certainly. But... <laughs> so I'm sorry. So these are... I don't want to piss the dogs off. I'm trying to find a picture of, I'm trying, of a clear TV set, but... Uh... You well, have, there, there it is. We've got one on the. See, yeah, you can see the. Nice uh, yeah. I mean, it's well, okay. What? What do you? What, what about it? So it'll be. A, it'll, be a, it'll be. It'll be. It'll be a thing in your living room, just attracting dust. Oh, I guess you. Uh, there's no frame to it either. That's that makes it doubly. Yeah, I thought yeah, there was. It's yeah. just like a big piece of glass sticking up. Yeah, yeah. It's but bad. it's yeah, but you can't uh, see. Yeah. Okay. How, how big was the uh, the screen? Seventy-seven inches. It's only two inches bigger than mine. Does it give a cost for one of these babies? It did not. Not on my stuff. What's your you guess, Chick? You know what my dad said? You have to ask what it costs. You can't afford it. That's I'm right. I'm going to say nine uh, grand. How much I'm, was your first TV that was... Uh, I don't want to say. It's embarrassing. $11,000. What? Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah, the first high-def TV I bought. Yeah. Boy, oh, boy. And wow. it was... Uh, I want a TV or a Ford 40, Escort. 42. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how big it was. And those things weighed a ton. It was a Pioneer oh, Elite. That, How thick was it? My friend Ace is correct. It probably weighed, I'm going to say, 500 pounds. Mm. And it was about uh, six inches thick. It wasn't th th wow. thin at all, no. Boy, the uh, prices come down and all that stuff, huh? Yeah. Way down. Okay, well, uh, we'll uh, when we come back, we'll be uh, exploring uh, something involving uh, reviving the dead. Good to know. Uh, this is Tom. the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at 1 888 Bob Tom 1 or at bobandtom.com. This is. Hi, uh, Tom here. God knows I'm not perfect. I guess I can be difficult and sometimes perhaps a little demanding. No. I'm sure some might say tyrannical, but I don't get it. I try to be a nice guy, but lately it seems that everybody's pissed at me. <laughs> My friends are pissed, my doctor's pissed, my mother's pissed, my lawyer's pissed, my waiter's pissed, and chick is pissed. Everybody's pissed at me, my banker's pissed, the band is pissed, my plumber's pissed, the fisher pissed, my barber's pissed, my brother's pissed. It is very plain to see, everybody's pissed at me, I think we can all agree, everybody's pissed at me. Off list. I'm sure there's someone that I missed, and that will probably make them pissed. It is very plain to see. Everybody's pissed at me. I think we can all agree. Everybody's pissed at me. Very justifiably. Everybody's pissed at me. Your friends are pissed, your is pissed, your mother's pissed, your lawyer's pissed, your waiter's pissed, your, waiter's pissed, your dog is pissed. Everybody's pissed at me. <laughs> Aging Michael Hunt. <laughs> Paging Michael Hunt. Is Mike Hunt here? All right. You ready for this? We are ready. Okay, that's why you're single. That's all. What? Are we? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. We're back live. Um, back with that. Not your tongue. He was Th talking about me because I went like this. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what it was. You see, you don't, you're not even aware of what you just did. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're live in the Napa Auto Parts studios. You're Coming up, our, in, our interview with Donald Fagan. You're from so Steely Dan. stupid. You don't no, know what you're doing. No, saying. no, we're trying to make conversation. Just before the mic's open, Josh goes, hey, uh, my toilet seat's uh, on the way. Yeah, that's right. He's excited about right. it. It was something we had did discussed. You, did you hear what Tom said? We were trying to make conversation. 
Tom doesn't he didn't have speak a word during no. that break. He, he doesn't kept say his anything. headphones They invented on. the phrase, he talks <laughs> at, at me. You. Yes. <clears throat> I thought it was like, I mean, Josh, okay, you're on a first date. Let's yes. just say, let's just say, and, you know, there's some nice music in the background. You're at a nice restaurant, and uh, <laughs> the waiter Here's comes that. up. You order a, some sort of cocktail, I assume. But so, what do you, what's your uh, beverage of choice? Uh, oh, I might have a, uh, a, a tequila and a okay. beer. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, a together? A beer. Sure, so, yeah, there a you go. beer and a shot. Why not? As you yeah, can what see, he's as thinking you can... is here, you <laughs> don't look like an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's thinking. Oh, no, no, I think he looks like one. Um, and then <laughs> Far, farthest from the truth, <laughs> and but then, go ahead. And then this this young lady orders something, and then you say, there's a conversation starter. Hey, uh, my uh, my new toilet seats. Uh, I just got a thing from Amazon. It's on the way. <laughs> and then she goes, yeah, I'm sure that's oh, what wait, he would waiter, do. could I get an Uber? I've got to get out of here. I have a thing. I gotta... oh my God, the way your brain operates. I know, it's amazing, Fascinating. isn't it? Fascinating. Mm-hmm. So your okay. new toilet seat, something you want to you tell us why? Well, because, no, we were talking, because I'm tired <laughs> thought... of my vacuum cleaner, and we, Christy and I were talking about vacuum, and I'm going to order the one she has. Yeah, you're and... replacing your vacuum. I love my so vacuum. I'm tired and, so, of my... and so to enter the conversation, you said, wow, that's really interesting. Hey, my toilet seat's on the way. <laughs> because the other okay, day I mentioned that I I broke about it. it. Josh, <laughs> I love you, but I think he might be right. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just saying I'm just saying it's kind of a kind of a conversation killer, really. I knew we only had four seconds left in the break. It's kind of a funny I thing. I thought I would yes. You know what? Oh, oh, I, I thought I was <laughs> I thought I was bringing up a topic you, that you would enjoy. You no, know, I get Josh. I know what he was trying to do. Okay, sir, I didn't understand. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it took just over a year, but about six months longer than I had in the pool, but it finally happened. No, you had you Josh, had the you had the under? Josh, you, I, had, you, I, I, the I would under. have I would have taken the under. Too. Josh now openly <laughs> hates Tom. I had the under myself. Congratulations. <laughs> but that was then they said I couldn't play because I was I could play. <laughs>
Wait a minute. Hang on a second. Drug oh, you testing. know what? We're not going to be drug tested, are we? I did. Answer me! I did have to uh, be drug tested before they actually hired me. One, yeah. one time. Yeah. I had, oh, did this involve urinating into a cup? Yes, I had to go to a certain clinic and pee in a cup. Yeah, they, they have do they Do they watch you pee? They did not in this case, no. They just tested the pee. Did you bring it in from home? No, I had to pee at the clinic. Well, can't you just switch it? I suppose I could have, yeah. Well, yeah. That's, I bring that up because we have this in the news, uh, Christy. In Florida, a woman taking a drug test tried to pass off dog urine as her own. <laughs> the 42 well, year the good old, news is you're negative for drugs, but, but you have worms. Was subject to <laughs> random. And it looks like you're going to have a litter. <laughs> oh. Was subject to random drug testing as part of previous release terms. A criminal complaint states the Clearwater resident had offered a fraudulent urine sample during an appointment at the county's misdemeanor probation unit. When confronted about the fake sample, the woman admitted she collected urine from her aunt's dog. Mm. She was arrested at the probation office. Um, wow. Kind of sad when you don't even have a friend that has clean urine. Yeah. Don't you think? Well, she had man's best friend. Yeah. Did she just have the chihuahua stuffed up there and walked into the room? And- oh, <laughs> no, Tom. My chihuahua God. stuffed up, up there. there. <laughs> so she oh. snuck it in. Now, do you remember that we we actually bought one of these things? There's a... Um, the fake mail yeah, unit. Yeah, there, there's a fake mm-hmm. mail member you can buy, Josh. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. The I remember Wizenator? the listener sent us one, too. What was it called? The Wizenator, wasn't it? I thought the Wizenator was the thing that measured the speed of your uh, urine on a urinal. No, the Wizenator, she's, yeah, I think it is. Didn't Michael Vick use a Wizenator? It could be. It's called that. It looks like a faux unit. That's and you, what I thought. But yeah. And as I recall, it came in several colors. Mm-hmm. So yes. Well, it yeah. depends yeah. on flesh tones, you, different flesh tones. Skittles or not. The Wizenator <laughs> official online store for synthetic urine. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty. With a realistic prosthetic device. Really something. Yeah. So I have a question. Oh, you want to see this? Oh, if if see you're going to use that. I'll uh, show it to you. Um, presumably you have to bring it up to room temperature or up to, excuse me, up to body temperature. I would think. I think so, yeah. And I think it's in a pouch. The fake yeah, is in a pouch can... next to the body, so it can. Is yes. that enough to, yes. or do you have to go to microwave it? Oh, I don't know. I guess the problem is when you're faking urine is the temperature. And they have a thermometer right there. Somehow a surface thermometer. They put the urine on there and it shows you... What you, here's what you get with your Wizenator order. Now, how much would you pay? You get the prosthetic with a silent valve technology, uh-huh. a refillable vinyl You don't want your couch. penis to go... No. <laughs> well, no, before the sil- silent valve, it was... <laughs> <laughs> that was a problem. You get the refillable vinyl pouch, one golden shower synthetic urine sample. Golden and is this is this four heat pads oh, ah. to heat fluids up to ninety eight point six degrees? Oh, is, is. Is, this because, is this because you, at some of these places you have to actually someone has to witness you filling the? Yeah, yeah. It, it, you're a seasoned offender if you're if that's the case. Yeah, right. <laughs> the random drug test in most offices and, and workplaces, you can just go give pee. You don't can have you to see do that? this. This is for your pro- oh, probation yeah. officer or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> well. I, I wonder if they can recognize the fake P. If it's sort of like AI technology, uh, they they recognize the pros, if you will, in this case. Ooh, mm. Comes in five colors. Nice. The P or the wiener? The wiener. Oh, oh. I yeah. said it. if you eat Skittles, you'll come in any color. Uh, d- 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 does color. it um, what? T- taste it, the rainbow, baby? Is there oh, yeah. is the, is taste the, that rainbow? Is there a color chart that you can check? Yeah, your check skin tone. Well, I don't know if there's a chart, but they show the different colors. Huh. White, tan. Do you want me to go on? Speckled. Latina, just out of curiosity, are they all the same size? Brown. Yes, they <laughs> or, are. So stereotypes don't play a part here? Because that no. would be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> underscoring certain stereotypes. <laughs> An Indian man. Wow, the O'Leary isn't nearly <laughs> as big as the... Washington. <laughs> hey. Is that what we're on here, yeah, yeah, right? Pat, sorry, Pat. <laughs> An Indian man who had been pronounced dead by doctors I'm allegedly just... came back to life when the ambulance transporting him home to his family hit a deep pothole. Oh, what? Yeah, according <laughs> what to the, the family, hell? the 80-year-old man from Haryana is Mr. Darshan Singhbrar. He had been feeling unwell for several days, was diagnosed with severe chest infection, and despite doctor's best efforts, he was pronounced dead after four days on a ventilator. But Four the, an- days on the a ambulance hitting the pothole somehow revived him. It must have knocked all that fluid loose in his lungs, I would assume. Mm-hmm. But they thought he was dead. Yeah. That's wild. 
Hey, put away the jumper cables, boys. <laughs> we got a live one. <laughs> I, I got a pulse here. <laughs> oh. Man. That's Man. really something. That's I can good. see where that used to be a problem, you know, in the, sure. the late 1800s. <laughs> right. And they had, used to have a bell in the or some sort of string in the coffin. Or yeah. You could, yeah. If you were still alive, you'd Face let Face rings know. a bell. That's there was never rings. any documentation that... That ever, ever happened. happened. Yeah. Really? There were a lot of problems with the bell, apparently. Well, the cats would play with it? Stuff <laughs> well, like that? The wind would slightly. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hmm. And sometimes corpses shift. They do what? They'll shift. Oh, shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I know for a fact that they have uh, a, a, a screw in type device that keeps all of the bottom. Can we talk clothes. about something else now? In the cadaver. How about this? There's new research revealing the effects of air pollution from rush hour traffic, which can have some uh, effect to your cardiovascular health. Scientists at the University of Washington unfiltered air from rush hour traffic apparently significantly increased passengers' blood pressure. What does it mean, unfiltered air? If they put, they put your face up to an exhaust pipe? Um, some cars have a filtration system. Yours does, I know for a fact. Others, some do not. Huh. But... I couldn't drive a car without a filtration system, I can tell you that. Both while in the car and up to 24 hours later, they noted a spike in blood pressure from air pollution comparable to that of a high-sodium diet. Wow. Is it also because you're driving in rush hour traffic and cursing at everybody? Yeah, so you'd be stressed. But they're just think. they're just taking the air, though. That's what they're saying. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're not putting them in that position. Could be the salt on the roads. This is an unscientific story. <laughs> salt on the roads. Why would the salt? Oh, I see. It couldn't get High the words out. This salt. is unscientific. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Huh. I need to get more stressed. If you're stressed, well, good news. The Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. How's 2024 going? Let's keep it going great. And uh, what uh, BetterHelp is all about is about applying contemporary technology to the world of therapy. Get your head organized a little bit better, perhaps, uh, with therapy. And um, uh, when I say contemporary technology, I'm talking about that computer you carry around all the time. It's your phone. And um, the BetterHelp people have a great idea, and it's been working really well. And what that idea is, is uh, y you do the therapy online. So, for example, you uh, will take a, a brief questionnaire, fill that out. You'll get matched with a licensed therapist. Then, by the way, you can switch therapists at any time if you so desire, no charge. And then um, the therapy itself is done online. So you you can do it like it's one of those Zoom calls or you can do it texting back and forth or you can do it uh, as if you were on the phone. Whatever works for you, this is all about convenience, flexibility, and something suited to your schedule. So it doesn't carve a huge portion of your life away to get there, stop what you're doing, go to therapy, come back. It's all done online. It's a good idea and better help has uh, perfected it. Get the details. Find out how this works by going to betterhelp.com slash BT show today. By the way, the slash BT show part will knock 10% off your first month. So celebrate the progress you're making so far in 2024. Visit betterhelp.com slash BT show. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P. Betterhelp.com slash BT show. The Bob and Tom show sponsored by BetterHelp. Coming up in the news, we have a beaver. Uh, in a big hospital, a big beaver, big everything's big in the story. And um, there's a place in France where the ladies doff their pants. You'll be quite surprised where that is. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Bob and Cam Newton folds like a Jeff Bodart joke. <laughs> <laughs> Turducken. Turducken. You mean, and now from the source. We're Turducken. all doing Bodart. <laughs> Turducken. 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 Let's listen. I'm going to play the original. I want to see if you guys can get the right pitch. Okay. I'll play it at the end of the, I'll say three, two, and one. Say okay. the one. Three, two. Turducken. 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 You got to go high. Turducken. Okay. The turducken on this show means a joke that uh, had, has no merit. Well, let's hear it. I think he had a stroke is my favorite line from Josh. A anyway, um, we could hear that, um, I love that in its entirety. Bit. My favorite was when Josh looks at him and trying to help. Uh, it was like being backstage for a moment. Dude, there's nothing there. <laughs> now, yeah, as, on. the setup on this is a uh, classic joke uh, delivered by our engineer, Ace. Ace, do you want to, can you do it again? Do you remember the joke? We, we were talking about... The uh, joke is in there, right? I don't think it's in this one. I'm oh, okay. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Do you know the joke, Ace, remember? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fact that uh, people think the first French fries were fried in France. They weren't. 
Oh, oh, where were, were they fried? They were fried in Greece. Ah. Oh. See, get it? Yeah. See? Good, yeah. good play on words. Love jokes that you have to go get it. Words have, words have two meaning. Greece, yep. you cook in That's Greece, right. a country. Right. Uh, and you don't see it coming. It's a classic joke. Sure. Now, try to get that, that joke momentum in your head as you hear what happened immediately following Ace's joke. What's a Me. duck fried in? What's a duck fried in? No, that's that's Jeff Bodart talking. And by the way, he just so got done excited. booing Ace. Right. He's yes, so yes. excited. So excited. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, uh, this is a man who makes his living selling wands. Hey! <laughs> okay. No, he's a, a stand-up comedian. Yeah, that's a side hustle. Oh, okay, okay. Side, it's a side hustle. hustle. Okay. <laughs> so once again, Ace says, "Okay, the, they're fried in, in 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 Greece. Okay, get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Then and then here's Mr. Bodart. What's Me. a duck fried in? What's a duck fried in? <laughs> Turkey." <laughs> now, I want you to know, I did not pause that. No. No. That was that was genuine. <laughs> Stun silent. I mean, that's a full two, three yes, seconds. That, yeah, we that's never have that. Silent. Yes, everyone never. is sort of processing. I think they're all going, that we're all going, <laughs> what? okay, why am I not getting this? Yes. Right. At first, your brain goes, I don't get it. <laughs> then, and then you're going, why don't I get it? What am I ignorant of? It must be some inside thing. And then we all realize none of us are getting it. And then we're laughing about that. And that's where we pick up the uh, pick up the joke. Turducken. <laughs> and then he and then he Turducken. Very. And then he takes ownership of it yes, yeah. by saying it again. Yeah. <laughs> which is what I am famous for. If if at first you don't succeed, yes, you say it again. Say it so many times, they'll laugh just to make you stop. <laughs> Let's get back to the momentum of the lack of a joke here. I mean, this is what happened next. That is, Turd that, that, that isn't even a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he may be having a stroke. <laughs> now, I, I have tried to say that isn't even a joke. Yeah. Yep. Now everyone's laughing, and then someone submits that he may be having a stroke <laughs> because he seems shy. to be so upset, and then it goes here. <laughs> It's as that, bad as that crap over there. That is not a joke. Now he's accusing Ace of telling a bad joke. Right. I enjoyed the joke very much. That's Ace. a, Ace's was a joke. And yes. It was a, yes. It was a yes. Classic, <laughs> classic joke. I think in, probably in the Joke Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. And then we continue. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, what, is, that what, what, does a dirt, what, no, what does a duck fight in? No, it's a, a duck fried in. Oh, what is a he's duck fried, fried in? He's fried in turkey. Yeah, turducken. <laughs> oh, Jeff, there's nothing no, there, there's man. Nothing. <laughs> That's, the, beauty, the beauty of the end of that is it's like two comedians have just come off stage. Yeah. They're, they're driving home after the gig, and Josh looks at him and goes, Hey, the Turducken thing. There, there's nothing, nothing there. there. There's nothing there, man. You can't know it. Because I maybe, out of all of us in the room, we're giving him the biggest benefit of the doubt. Yeah. yeah. Because I've. <laughs> You've been there. And yeah, sometimes you just got to so, tell him, no. Man. I, it, to use the word concept wrong, conceptually, uh, concept really means like gravity, but nevertheless, oh, okay. conceptually, what he's trying to say is, uh, when you make a, a turducken, that's the that was popular a few years back. What is it? You take a boneless uh, chicken or something and cram it inside a duck, and then cram that inside a turkey. Is that right. the deal? Yeah. Right. But you don't always fry them. No, you don't fry them. <laughs> and I suppose you probably could. You don't, but you don't. And the turkey punchline relies on the grease punchline. Right. So it doesn't even stand on its own. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. So, so uh, that is the... If you uh, really want to get into it. Yeah. This is a new feature on the show we call Joke Autopsy. <laughs> <laughs> where we take well, a joke to the morgue we and could be start here all night. doing some show. And you know, if you talk to Jeff, he still thinks it was funny. I know. And, and claims that people got to have his back. No. That, uh, no one can, I would no. like to see the exegesis as that is, you lay it all out for me, there's no way. What is a, what is it, what, what is a duck fry? Jeff, in? there's yeah. nothing there, man. <laughs>
Another playoff game, Tom. Mm-hmm. One game and out. Chick, would you, if you were invited to lunch with Jerry Jones, would you go? I would pass. <laughs> really? I, would? Couldn't, I couldn't be in his presence. <laughs> would no. you laugh when he spoke? Um, no. I'd be irritated and, uh, <laughs> and uh, disgusted. You wouldn't want to talk about... Uh... No. <laughs> Uh-oh. Really? It's like in that lofty... No, uh, no, no, uh, no Cowboys. I, gotta I had a chance, actually, to meet uh, Roger Staubach at one point. I said, no, thank you. Wow. Really? No, thank you. Hmm. Okay. No. I, uh, they're, the NFL's different. I mean, they're trading jerseys after the game. I mean, no. No. <laughs> You're playing a game, and they're the end of me. Okay? All right. Okay, good. Damn right. Yes, yeah, so you once claimed that the most disgusting thing in sports is the... Hockey handshake after oh. <laughs> turns my stomach. And, uh, whatever, uh, like, uh, McDavid. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Bedard. Uh. Eh? Mm-hmm. Okay, Christy, what do you got over there? Uh, well, we have fruit bats in the news. They may hold the cure to king- curing diabetes. What? Hope it doesn't, oh. but it doesn't involve hanging upside down. Uh, <laughs> although a high sugar diet in humans can lead to diabetes, obesity, and even cancer, fruit bats not only survive, <laughs> but also thrive while eating these foods, consuming up to twice their body weight in sugary fruit daily. Researchers from the University of California, San Francisco, are investigating how these remarkable bats have evolved to consume such large amounts of sugar and whether this ability can be applied to help diabetic humans. Interesting. Yeah. Fruit okay. bats. Good mm-hmm. to know. Hmm. In, uh, they don't have a fruit Batman, do they? A fruit Batman? Boy, there's a, well, there's a <laughs> proposition that I'm not even going to touch. <laughs> Robin! <laughs> I, knew it, I was hoping you wouldn't do that. Uh, Couple of on. stories from Australia. Wildlife experts have removed a crocodile from a family's chicken coop. Oh. <laughs> Queensland Department of Environment, Science, and Innovation. Well, what the heck was the crocodile doing in the chicken coop, Tom? <laughs> Lunching? <laughs> yeah, that's Ending that's the crocodile's <laughs> dream of a life. <laughs> Said wildlife officers were called to the Cape Hillsborough home after residents found the crocodile in their yard. <laughs> Though the crocodile made its way into the property's chicken pen, all of the family's chickens and pets pets were accounted for. Wow. Yeah. Thank Doesn't goodness. that sound like an old country saying? Well, <laughs> uh, there's a crocodile in the chicken coop. Yep. Oh, yeah. It means you, you means got to take a crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, crocodile poking his nose Chicken out in the, the bread chicken. pan and uh, crocodile in the chicken coop. <laughs> I got to hit the outhouse. There's a, there's a crocodile in the chicken coop. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Crocodile in the chicken coop. <laughs> also from Australia, a woman found one of the world's most venomous snakes in her toddler's underwear oh. drawer. Oh, okay. Not in his underwear. Melbourne snake catcher Mark Pelly said he was called to a home where a woman discovered a five-foot-long eastern brown snake in a dresser drawer. Good eye, Mike. He explained that the reptile had apparently hidden among folded laundry the mom brought from the clothesline and put away in the drawer without realizing. That could also be a euphemism for having to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I got an eastern brown snake in my underwear. <laughs> oh, more. Yeah, better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a crocodile in the chicken coop sounds more like a country song. Yeah. There's a crocodile in the chicken coop. Well, Lisa was able to successfully capture and remove the deadly snake. In a video posted to social media, he opens the drawer, reveals the snake coiled in the back corner among the boy's clothes. If you're wondering, how can a mom bring a snake in? How can a mom bring a snake in? Well, apparently, (laughs) Mr. Pelly explained they weigh next to nothing. And seriously, this can happen to anyone. He says, I've seen people carry brown snakes in their handbag or otherwise shopping bags. And one day, this could happen to you. Wow. Holy well, hell. Well, what? If well, you as he looked right to the camera. Yeah. Yeah. This no. could happen to you. <laughs> if if I'm in Australia, I'm going to get a dryer. Man. I'm so my stuff outside. what you need is me to come visit and take a precautionary <laughs> look around your home. Yes. Right? That's, that's scary. I've got a really obscure um, uh, trivia fact for you. Really? Okay. I mean, unbelievably obscure. Has it been verified? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Do you know who uh, Jerry Harrison is? No, who's from Jerry Harrison? Heads? Yeah, from the Talking Heads. Barely. He's a, oh, tremendous musician and a super interesting guy. He well, is, uh, um, the days are... he is of all things on the side developing, um, what may revolutionize the anti-venom, 
uh, world of uh, of uh, snake protection. Uh -huh. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I'm serious. It's it's like this. He's involved in this organization. They're, they, I know what you want us to say. He's involved in some organization that makes anti venom. Yeah. And it's going to revolutionize, apparently. I mean, snakes kill tens of thousands of people every year. Evidently, uh, snake venom causes you to buy uh, uh, suits, like, five sizes too big. Oh, yes. No, that yeah. was David Byrne. I, Jerry didn't wear that. This well, is part of the project called Stop Making Sense. <laughs> okay. Just a little obscure trivia fact. You're welcome. That's very interesting. You can Google. No one said thank you. No one cares. <laughs> I don't think it's great. This guy's super smart, great musician. No. I enjoyed learning about it. Okay. Was he in the Tom Tom Club? I'll talk yes. to you. Yeah. yeah. I can play. Okay, I'm sorry. Back Whatever. to you. A woman's going viral after she turned her pet hamster into a taxidermied stripper. Oh, uh, this is huh? sickening. Ms. Jess Porter Langson posted a video. I hate her already. Three names? Yeah. Posted a video online explaining that when her pet dwarf hamster named Hammington or Hammy Come on. passed away, <laughs> she decided to spend the $200 to have him immortalized as a tiny stripper. Psychopath. <laughs> she gave her beloved pet over to B. Ostrovska of B. Odd Creations, who specializes in creating unusual taxidermy statues of animals. I am B. Ostrovska. After several months, yes, Porter I Langston am lunatic. <laughs> received the piece back featuring Hammy wearing a pink thong and hanging onto a miniature stripper pole surrounded by tiny bills. Hubba hubba, ya! Yeah. The 27 year old told Kennedy <laughs> News that Hammy now watches over her next to her bed. Oh, lovely. Well, that's she, perfect. If you went to her house, got into her bedroom, let's say things were going really well, uh -huh. mm. and you saw this next to her bed. Would that be a red flag? Would you exit? I'd go, uh, oh, well, excuse me for there a second. And I'd pretend to go to the bathroom and set the house on fire. <laughs> there's, there's Hammy. All right. In her defense, <laughs> it is pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> now, but keep in mind. Hammy's the one on the right. Uh, yes, Hammy, Tom. That picture, Hammy is dead. Yeah. Taxidermied is, uh, is taxidermied not gets. right. Will and the, the, owner, the owner's the girl in that picture? Yeah. And he's, he just needs a new dye job. Well, it's pretty. Like roots are it's, like it's pretty realistic. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I is this trashy? I like the look of oh, the, 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 the roots skunk? with the blonde. The yeah. skunk. Yeah, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like the slut look, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty realistic hamster stripper. Because if you listen, the hamster stripper's talking to the guys in the front row about her community college. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I think that hamster doesn't have it any worse than this particular guy. It's new, it's crazy, and it's educational. It's the Richard Gear Gerbil Habitat Trail Kit. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, will your gerbils go nuts when they whip down your Richard Gear Gerbil Habitat Trail. Just listen. Wow, it sure is dark in here. <laughs> P you. Hey, Squirmy, did you have Limburger cheese for lunch? Whoa! <laughs> You'll have hours of fun with a Richard Gere Gerbil Habitat Trail Kit. Hey, hey, somebody get me out of here. <laughs> it's from Ramco Industries. Medicated lotion and suction evacuator sold separately. Boy, you are prohibited. Not approved by the ASPCA or the ASSPAC. All celebrity voices impersonated. Package cover photos. Copyright Robert Mapleford. Gerbil's not included. <laughs> A.S.S. PAC. Sure. Uh, oh, sure. Not, not ASCAP, not no. the musical no. uh, licensing organization. <laughs> no. ASPAC. No. Yeah. Um, well, that's a. Yeah. What did Richard Gere do to deserve that? I always shove the shove the gerbil up his ass. <laughs> Made somebody uh, mad. Between really, him and uh, between him and Rod Stewart, what really what happened? Found. I have no doubts that Rod Stewart. That, that's true. No, oh that's, come on. That's zero doubts. Zero. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, well, all those rock Police and rollers, in Tennessee. All those little tiny British rock and rollers. Uh, all right. Police in Tennessee report they removed a huge beaver from inside a hospital. Really? Look at the yep. size of that thing. The Bartlett Police what, Department. What, did she just give birth to triplets? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Said officers were called to St. Francis Hospital for a beaver that was loose in the building. Silent yawn. The department shared a photo of the beaver inside what appeared to be a large trash bin uh, with social media users commenting on its size. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> Body know. cam footage shows the beaver peeking out from atop the bin as officers... Looked like a penthouse magazine in 78. <laughs> ...wheel it out to a nearby canal. That uh, Bob Guccione liked the fur, didn't he? Yeah, boy, oh boy, he was... <laughs> they then tip the bin over a fence and the beaver belly flops into the water before gingerly swimming away. What water? The water of the canal where they went and dumped him. Oh. You weren't listening. Okay. No, no, no. Too busy trying to formulate beaver jokes. Because yep. <laughs> it is a, a slang term for yeah. giant. Oh, yeah, thank oh, you. Is? I had yeah, no idea. Huh. Uh, <laughs> and how did that start? Beaver? The slang. Why, why did it become a slang for her? Right. Yeah. Uh, duh. What do you think, Pat? I, I mean, don't. I yeah, but there are a lot of furry animals out there. Yeah, why the beaver? beaver? But you see a beautiful... Damn! Is no. that it? That's not. perfectly valid. I like maybe that. Not, maybe not. Probably not true. I hated it. It was I, loud. I sold that <laughs> way too much. I'm way excited. <laughs> it's probably because of the teeth. Oh, oh teeth. little vagina dentata. Mm -hmm. Vagina dentata. <laughs> How did that start? How what did that start? Who came up with that? Oh, that's been around forever. No. Yeah, I know. Uh, yes. Patriarchal fears, that That's kind like of thing. Shakespeare came up with that. Yeah, right? yeah it's a, it really has been around. There for are no teeth in the vaginas, as far as you know. Well, mm. but it's because there's no teeth in. Well, okay. All right. <laughs> in France, the post office is providing changing rooms now in some branches huh? to cater to online shoppers who want to quickly return online clothing purchases that don't fit. I have to try these on. In a Paris post office participating in the test, a standalone changing room in the canary yellow color and shape of a French mailbox has been installed. Inside is a chair, mirror, and shelf to place your package I had a fun day last night. Returns. Give her the old French mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> she had a flag up. So. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. Said oh, she you. was up for it, yeah. yeah. She won't walk right for a week. <laughs> uh. <laughs> She's on the cane. What do you think of that, Christy? <laughs> That's not going to happen here. <laughs> No, we get them to our home, and then we try them on. We don't like them. We take them back to the but UPS it's store. kind of ingenious. Or to take it to Kohl's. Amazon. This is for Isn't easy. this for women selling their panties more so than... No, 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 no. No, so they, they're, they're well, buying clothing. These are people and they, buying clothing no. online. And that's and what they're saying women it is. women selling their panties. What? Sure it is. You take a video of, you, of the woman, takes a video of her walking to the post office and then boxing it up right there. You know you're getting it hot off well, the press. Well, she unboxes well, it. All right. Boy, that's a really wild speculation. Well, that's you're just, sick. I'm shocked <laughs> coming from somebody who admitted to me in the green room that you are now selling your panties. Oh, God, don't start that rumor. <laughs> rumor? You are leaving money on the table. Yes, you are. Well, that's fine. What email should they ask uh, for inquiries? I'm not selling serious, panties. Serious inquiries. Wait, let me ask you this. What, <laughs> Chick oh, hang, hang on for a second. Just, just be, hear me out on this. What if, for charity, we, we, we agreed on a charity, what a and everybody on the show... Provided a uh, pair of uh, game worn, <laughs> if you will, underwear. No, just, no, me, just, no, that's not no. Happening. Yeah, all right, let's hear them up. <laughs> no. I mean, you lost me a charity, but go ahead. <laughs> Maybe a pair of socks, but no. No. You wouldn't sell your boxers? No. Josh has done this. Oh, so, it's, so the, the, well, Josh is a filthy, awful person. I am. <laughs> See? I think it's perfectly reasonable. And it would just be one package. You would within. sell your underwear, Tom. Come on. Sure. What would I care? I don't care. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And I don't know. If somebody like $10,000, how could you say no, right? I wouldn't say no. $1,000. Like yeah. well, 50 Pat. You wouldn't sell your underwear for $50. No, that's Your not underwear 50. probably costs 50 Don't you wear some kind of fancy silk Cheap stuff? You, I you bet you do. Jeez. Of course. I like, my, I like myself. I treat myself very nice. <laughs> I don't think I don't spend $50 on underwear for a year. Yeah, that, really? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I did better than you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, it's a choice I'm making. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. You'll be get Ace's underwear. You have to, everybody put it in a put it in a well, box. Ace's and... underwear is full of holes because he's farted holes in. But, but, pe but people would want it to frame. Fart, it. fart, fart. <laughs> <laughs> They'd want to frame it. Yeah, shadow box. Put it in. Uh, yeah, put it in I the shadow Mark, box. I had the... Mark Rippon's jock strap at one point. I don't know where it is now. I kind of lost, lost track it? of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew I kept it in a bowling ball bag with a game board, wa a Washington uh, bowling ball. Uh, yeah, they were all right off the locker room floor. Okay, okay, very good, very yeah. good. Okay, well, uh, Christy, what else you got over there? Well, archaeologists have uncovered a huge network of ancient cities in the Amazon rainforest. Sure they have. The settlements, which <laughs> date back 2,500 years, mm -hmm. include wide streets, long stretches of straight roads, plazas, and clusters of monumental platforms. And a cell phone store. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah. a, cr a cricket right there. A dollar, a, a dollar General. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere now. They were found in the Yupano Valley of Amazonian Ecuador in the eastern foothills of the Andes. 
This discovery marks the earliest and largest urban network of built and dug features mm. in the Amazon. Oh, and dug also, features. How are you? <laughs> also suggests <laughs> the existence of advanced engineering at the time. You can find out more in the journal Science. I've seen the movie uh, Congo. It yeah. is asking to be met by killer oh. apes. Mm. An albino ape. Yep. Everybody knows it. The myth of the killer ape is true. <laughs> Who says I, that? Tim did, Curry in oh, a weird accent. Oh, he's cool. Yeah, why did he? Yeah, uh, now, uh, um, uh, coming up, we have a, a little bit of a history lesson for you. But right now, I want to say thanks to the Raycon folks. We talk about the Raycon earbuds. Uh, we haven't talked much about those sealed headphones, which I got for my girls before we went on vacation. Ah, peace. They were able to hop on the plane, and uh, nothing bothered them because they were enjoying life with the Raycon headphones on. Tell me more about the earbuds, Chick. That's right. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever, and they will be indispensable even more so in 2024. The optimized gel tips fit every ear ever made and they will not budge they won't, you won't look around and be fall out on the floor not raycons they're priced just right too you get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands no wonder raycons everyday earbuds have tens of thousands of five star reviews and don't forget about the awesome features like customizable sound profiles and awareness mode raycons truly have it all go to buy raycon dot com slash tom today get 15 percent off your raycon order that's buy com slash tom score 15 percent off raycon products that's buy com slash tom uh, i love the raycons and once again not just those earbuds i love those sealed headphones when we come back La, da, 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 da. a little bit of history this is the bomb and tom show add to or continue the Uh, we got dumped. <laughs> uh oh, is there anything you'd like to say to them? Well, our girls have left us, so I'd like to say just one thing. Oh, yeah. Baby, blow me. Oh, a kiss as you're leaving. Blow me. Oh, a kiss right now. Because if you're going to leave me, honey, I will surely miss the way you blow me. Oh, blow me a kiss. Come on and blow, 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 blow me. A kiss like you, mama, mean it. Blow me. A kiss right now. I really can't remember anything as hard as this. So blow me. Blow me a kiss. Wow. Some things in life are hard to swallow. She couldn't take it all, Dean. She couldn't handle everything. Who could? But if she comes back tomorrow. As you're leaving, baby Blow me Oh, a kiss as you go And always think about me As you're going down your list <laughs> And blow me Blow me a kiss I'll miss her arms <laughs> And her elbows I'll miss her arms and her elbows <laughs> I'll miss her legs so tall yeah! I'll miss her legs so tall I'll miss her neck <laughs> And her shoulders Yes, sir but I'll miss her You wanna come home, honey? That's okay. Just grab a hold of this, and baby, blow me. Baby, won't you blow me? Blow me a kiss. Oh, hi, Miss Melvin. Oh, Sally. I'll miss your arms and your elbows. Bob Dean and Tom Band and Orchestra. Amazing. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Jerry. Um, oh, that's fantastic.
Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finished second over former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. Caucus voters endured life-threatening cold and dangerous driving conditions to meet in hundreds of schools, churches, and community centers across the state. Next up, New Hampshire. Iran says it fired missiles at what it claimed were Israeli spy headquarters near the U.S. consulate in the northern Iraq city of Erbil and at targets linked to the extremist group Islamic State in northern Syria. Four civilians killed, six injured late Monday after missiles hit an upscale area near the consulate in Erbil, the seat of Iraq's semi-autonomous Kurdish region. The strikes come at a time of heightened tensions in the region and fears of a wider spillover of the ongoing war in Gaza. The U.S. State Department condemned the strikes as reckless. Dangerous wind chills continuing to affect much of the Rockies, Great Plains, and Midwest, with wind chills minus 30 degrees being recorded Tuesday in many parts of the central U.S., about 110,000 U.S. homes and businesses without power late Monday, the bulk of them in Oregon after more widespread outages that started Saturday. Classes canceled Tuesday for students in Portland, other major cities including Chicago, Denver, Dallas, and Fort Worth also feeling the the cold and that's a look at your news headlines more of the bob and tom show coming up ladies and gentlemen bob and tom 55 percent said self-help books have had a lasting impact on their life nearly half write down their favorite quotes from books that have inspired them among the most memorable sayings people recall are the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. That's exactly right. Never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. Be afraid, but do it anyway. Isn't that nice? Oh, that, that is, is nice. Good. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a fool. <laughs> oh, he's he's dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, 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 he jumped off a cliff. He yeah. jumped off a cliff. He's a bunch of <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm scared to death. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Essential morning radio all day and all night. You might as well shoot me when the beer runs out. Bob and Tom Radio. Tom Radio. And now an important message from your friends at Frigamall Orthopedic Laboratories. Hi, Brenda. Ready to go jogging? Sorry, Christy. I can't. Didn't you notice I'm limping? What happened? Did you blow a knee out? Well, my knees do hurt. What do you mean? Well, we were on our way home last night, and Bob started feeling romantic, so we pulled down a gravel road. And today, my knees are really killing me. Girlfriend, I've got just the thing for you. They're called Attagirl Knee Pads. With their soft, cushiony padding, you can say goodbye to sore and scraped knees. Attagirl Knee Pads fit right in your purse, so you can take them anywhere. Perfect for a Friday night date or that important job interview. Hey, Brenda, how'd it go last night? Well, my knees feel great, but, uh, <clears throat> do the Attagirl people make lozenges? <laughs> you whore. Attagirl Knee Pads. Order today, and you'll receive a free head helmet. You'll love wearing this stylish tabletop helmet with its flat, level surface, big enough to hold his beer, remote control, and a magazine. Attagirl Knee Pads. Protective goggles sold separately. Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you are listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Comedian Diana Jordan is here with us. Now, can I ask you something? Yeah. Since you've been here last, have you had any augmentation of any kind? No. Okay. Must what, be. Oh, I'm wearing the Wonder Bra. Is that... Are you kidding? I, yeah. No. <laughs> I just showed it. Impressive. Yeah. They call it the Wonder Bra because when you take it off, the guy wonders where in the hell you're... <laughs> <laughs> Essential morning radio all day and all night. Yeah, this is Bob and Tom Radio. Some details coming up. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. A lot of people say this is their favorite part of the show. Ooh, the end, chick? The no, end? no, no, no. Because it's over? <laughs> because this happens. That's ah. right. Oh. Talk about today in history because if we don't remember, the, observe the, if we don't talk about the past, we're doomed to, to talk about the future. Failure of repeating. Uh, 1493. Oh, one year after the big year, 1492. Right? Uh, Christopher Columbus leaves what they were calling the New World and sets sail for Spain. 
leaving gonorrhea behind. Um, um, Syphilis, um, whatever he brought. Yeah, I mean, there was a new world to him, not for the folks who were already here. Right. right. Somewhat oh, yeah. uh, controversial. There was a guy eating a sandwich on shore when they came. Uh, hey, what are you guys doing Hey, here? what the hell am I, chopped liver? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some tobacco? Wacky uh, tobacco? Um, 1919, prohibition takes effect. Oh, that worked well. A lot of people made some money. Yeah. 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 Was yeah. that just a cash grab for the for the organized crime? Or? Well, they weren't organized until then. Yeah, uh, that's not a good reason to get organized. Yeah. Um, prohibition. Uh, now, we have uh, oh, one of my favorites. 1962, the shooting begins on the first James Bond film. Do you know which one the first one was, Christy? Uh, no. Exactly. Correct. Yes. Yes. Dr. No. Dr. No. <laughs> you got you nailed it. <laughs> oh. What a genius. Uh, Dr. No portrayed by the great actor Joseph Wiseman. Terrific. That's, that's one of the scariest Bond villains. I liked him a lot. <laughs> he had two brothers. He was one of the three Wiseman. Oh, no, no kidding. Uh, let's <laughs> Joe, see. Jimmy, and Jack. They were, uh, were the pet boys. Um, good friend of the show, Peter Frampton, on this date in 1976, releases the classic album, Frampton Comes Alive. Wow. Senior in high school, I lost my mind. And uh, Peter is still out there. He is uh, once again uh, doing some touring. The Peter's spring. Out. Peter's out, baby. And uh, he's got. he's dealing with a pretty serious... Um, Diagnosis regarding. Uh, uh, Let's just say he's out there. Well, no, but I'm saying he's he's out there playing still, and he's still mm -hmm. great. So uh, by all means, if you get a chance, go see Mr. Frampton. Is. He'll be in Northern Indiana, coming just yeah. up just around the corner. I think. Um, now let's see. How about this one? Oh, happy birthday to the great A.J. Foyt. How well, old is he? He's got to be born in 1935. Wow. Mm. Uh, wow. Um, we'll look forward to seeing A.J. at the track once again this year. Of course. Um, happy birthday. You know this is, uh, Josh? John Carpenter? Yes, of course. He's a film director. He's a no, he was the Karen, father of a Karen Richards. Karen Richards' brother. brother. <laughs> uh, he's very upset. <laughs> <laughs> made, made horror we films because they... just be Because they made the... <laughs> they they <laughs> wouldn't, let him in the, wouldn't let him in the band. Uh, uh, didn't okay. they... Somebody voted Karen Carpenter one of the top ten drummers yes. in rock and roll? I think they did. Yeah. I think you're right. She's, she's pretty good. She's not bad, I guess. Hmm. I mean, she would have been better if she hadn't been so weak. Oh. But, uh, I'm so sorry. I barely hit a pop. this one? Um, the sandwich. Work out. Uh, it's a weight. Uh, born in 1980, uh, Lynn manuel Miranda. Uh, uh, Lynn manuel Miranda. What about Lynn Automatic? Twisting Mar history what into his own. What about Lynn Automatic Miranda? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Start in, ha in Hamilton. No, none yes. of this is helping. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. It, just in the news, uh, born in 1985, the great quarterback Joe Flacco. Ooh. Joe Flacco. Now, do you think he'll be back on the bench? Nope. Oh, yeah. He'll be couch? back on the bench. Will he, yeah. be, uh, will he remain on the bench? Well, they, they got to give him money. They already gave him money. I don't know if they'll just say, you know what, Joe, just stay home. I don't know, man. I don't know. That couldn't have ended uh, more horribly. Yeah, it would have been nice if it had ended. Boy, I like the look. I, people are saying, I like the Ravens are the team to beat. They've got, they've. But, man, I, that damn kid from Ohio State, he's something else. Uh, 1981, uh, the great guitarist from the the great band The Strokes, Nick Valenci, having a birthday today. Not his real name. Happy birthday. What? Yeah. What would you say? Simon Jacks, his real name. I said not his oh, real name. How about that? Yeah. Stage name. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> he's fun in you, Tom. I just like to throw you every now and yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and now it's time to review what we learned on today's show. Some moody Italian. Nick Valencia. No, it's actually uh, Simon Arnold. <laughs> Grew up in Trenton, New Jersey. <laughs> Time now for things we learned today on the show. Brought to you by Chick McGee. Oh, how about that? Uh, Tom saw the Harlem Globetrotters over the weekend and lost his mind. It's one of his favorite things. Oh, so funny. And now he's passed it on to his children. <laughs> Do the girls really like it or they just go because you drug them there? They love it. It's so much fun. Okay. Do they bring somebody out from the audience to have them participate? They do. And then throw the, have them make a shot or And whatever? they had one little kid come out and the kid on his own walked up to the basket and got it. Crowd went crazy. Plant. Plant. That's what I was going to say. Plant. 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 Was it a free throw or half court? No, no, it was like a layup, but it was still funny. Definitely a plant, yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's a thing where they, they I, I don't want to spoil it for you. Go see the Globetrotters. They're fun. Your girls loved it? They loved it. What were they watching on their iPads? <laughs> <laughs> really? Do you buy one of those spinning things that lights up? They have those there? 
Uh, I think I bought one of those last year. I think that one. Did the four of you go or just the three of you? Four of us went. It was okay. Fun. We had a really? great time. All right. I highly recommend now, it. Now, was it, uh, was it <laughs> her and the kids, one, two, and then you? Or did you two sit together and then the kids? You cut a little bit. What gas station had the free tickets on the counter? <laughs> it's unbelievable. I, I was just going to say what a great facility what it was. was. I'm, I'm a big tickets. fan. One of, the, what, one of the great facilities in the United States of America, downtown Indianapolis, that beautiful facility right there. Yeah, Cambridge Fieldhouse. Mm, it's amazing. Yeah. It's freezing. Tom tells his <laughs> young daughters, crazy. Tom has always said, girls, don't dream about ghosts right before they go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you honestly think that helps, don't you? Uh, of course. Boy, oh boy. Uh, also, Tom, uh, some more wisdom. You never give someone a live animal as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> no. no puppies, kittens, baby chicks. A total a, burden. A pygmy hippo. None of those. <laughs> no. It's good advice from Tom Griswold. Uh, yes, that's true. I observe that Baker Mayfield has moxie mm -hmm. after quarterbacking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, beating the Eagles. Last well, how night. Is, he's got plenty of moxie. How's he on the chutzpah? Oh, uh, I don't know, but he winning uh, the playoff game last night, he won a, an extra quarter million dollars, according to his contract. That's awesome. Good and it's coming up this weekend. If they can beat the Lions, he'll get another quarter million dollars. And who are you picking? Wow. Uh, I'm not going to say now. Josh told us all about squid jerky. Yeah. Yep. And we're all kind of sick about it. Yuck. Yeah. Somebody said they, um, a, a gentleman uh, wrote in and said he got some squid jerky when he was in Korea and he decided to go home, uh, take it home for his dad right. and his luggage all reeked of it. Oh. <laughs> now, this is, a del this is a delicacy in... in it's at, really not even, it's just a snack. Yeah. At, at movie theaters in South Korea. Yeah, he, this gentleman got it at a baseball game. So, yeah, it's, it's a concession item. Oh. But it's dry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dried squid. And you can buy it on the street, like uh, hot dog vendors type places, they have those. And oh, squid. Really? Yeah. It's just squid. <laughs> and, you, and you taste it. Is it fishy? It was fishy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Little tentacles on it. Yep. Not, <laughs> not, not particularly good. I didn't care for it. Did you spread the tentacles out and put them on your face? You can't. You snap them. Oh, I'm not an animal. <laughs> you know, stuff like it's that. So, it's so dried. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I went to high school with a helicopter pilot. It's like fringe on a leather jacket. You sure. know what I'm yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, Tom's mom called cash money every now and then. She said it was clams. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be 10 clams. 20 clams. The guys in the Husco. <laughs> For those of you who uh, forgot, uh, Tom's mom was also a gym teacher, and Tom had a mysterious aunt <laughs> that was around them. Around a lot, yes. Family. Distinguished woman uh, on the board of a bank and a trustee of a college. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Talked with her very... She thought Chick was mildly amusing. <laughs> <laughs> did, not, did not care for me one iota. I'll tell you that story thought later. I was a smart uh, This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. Even though we're not too much to look at, you can also watch the show on our YouTube